Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Village of Gurney Planning and Zoning Board for this Wednesday, November 7th, 2018. We have roll call, please. Bow. Here. Garrity. Here. McFarland. Here. Nordentoff. Here. Path. Here. Pasak. And Sula. Present. We do have a quorum. If everyone would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Um, First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our meeting that was held on October 17th. Does anyone have any questions, changes, or comments about the minutes? Can you hear me? No. Let me see, I hear you. Okay. Well, if Motion to approve as written. I'll second it. Move second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, the first part of our meeting, <clears throat> the next part of our meeting right now is, is a public hearing. Um, and Clara, can you give us a staff report, please? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Prior to this. Yeah, I, you were out, I think. Do we have any handheld mic that works? Or no? Okay. 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 So, so I just have quite a bit to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're feeding into the recording devices, but we're okay. not feeding into the room. Okay. Kensington Development, on behalf of Aldi, is seeking approval for a zoning map amendment, two special use permits, and two variances in order to construct a 21,000 square foot Aldi grocery store. The requested minor sign exceptions do not require a public hearing and will be handled separately. The subject 2.5 acre property is a through lot with frontage on both Grand and West Woodland Terrace. The property is located immediately west of the Fifth Third Bank building at 7500 Grand Avenue. A solid five foot tall wood opaque fence will be installed along the west property line. Buffer landscaping will be provided along the north and west property lines. The site's lighting and landscaping plans meet code. Access will be provided via a right-in, right-out from Grand Avenue shared with the bank property and full access from West Woodland Terrace. Village staff reached out to both school districts that have bus stops in the area and informed them about the potential development so that they could evaluate and make adjustments should the approvals be granted. The following are a list of requested actions. The applicant is seeking a zoning map amendment to rezone the subject property from GC, General Commercial in Unincorporated Lake County, to C2, Community Commercial in the Village of Gurney. The proposed zoning is consistent with the Village's comprehensive land use plan, which reflects commercial business as the future land use for the subject parcel. Grocery stores are a permitted use in both the GC General Commercial District in unincorporated Lake County <coughs> and in the C2 Community Commercial District in the Village of Gurney. The site abuts residential zoning to the north and west in unincorporated Lake County, commercial zoning to the east, and both commercial and office zoning to the south and southeast. Uh, the applicant is also seeking the following variances. The encroachment of the parking lot into the 25-foot Grand Avenue setback. The property's Grand Avenue property line is angled so that approximately the western half of the pavement area fronting Grand is set back 25 feet or more, while approximately the eastern half of the pavement area fronting Grand is set back less than 25 feet. And two, to reduce the separation of the site's West Woodland Terrace curb cut from the bank's curb cut. The zoning ordinance requires that curb cuts be separated a minimum of 50 feet from each other. Fifth Third Bank's existing curb cut and the proposed development's curb cut onto Woodland Terrace are separated by approximately 10 feet. 
The proposed curb cut into the Aldi site is directly opposite the intersection of North Douglas Terrace and West Woodland Terrace. The applicant is seeking the following special use permits. One, a reduction in the transparency on the north and south elevations to less than the required 50%. <coughs> The zoning ordinance requires that ground floor elevations which parallel a street maintain a minimum transparency of 50% measured between two and 10 feet in height from grade. The south elevation has 38.4%. The north elevation has 4.1% transparency as this wall borders an employee only back room space and refrigeration equipment. Spandrel glass was added to both frontages in order to add the appearance of glass. Although this increases the appearance of glass, code does not allow spandrel glass to be counted toward the transparency percentage. And two, a reduction in the percentage of green area within the parking lot to below 10%. The site contains 9.3% of green area interior to the parking lot. 0.7 or approximately 353 square feet below the minimum. As with all rezoning variants and special use permit petitions, the Planning and Zoning Board will make a recommendation on each that will be forwarded to the Village Board for their determination. The petitioner is in attendance to present their plans and answer any questions the Board may have. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Um, let me explain the, the format of the meeting a little bit because I'm sure many of you have not been to one of these meetings before. Um, as I mentioned before, this, this next step is a public hearing. In a little bit, I'm going to ask anybody that intends to ask a question or make a statement uh, to, to stand up and be sworn in by the village attorney. After we do that, I'm going to turn the floor over to the representatives from Aldi, and they're going to give us an overview of their presentation uh, of, of their project. Once they conclude their presentation, the Planning and Zoning Board members will consider the five items that Clara just uh, outlined one at a time. At the end of the day, or in, at the end of the evening, um, this body makes a recommendation to the Village Board, but our only purview are the five items that she mentioned. The, the, the change in zoning from county zoning to village zoning, the uh, parking setback along Grand Avenue, um, the curb cut separation, the transparency issue, which we'll explain a little bit more later, and um, the reduction in green space. Those are the only five items that, that we have purview over in terms of making a recommendation to the village board. Um, once we've had our first round of comments, I'll open the floor to the public, and I will ask you to direct your comments to, to me and staff. Once everyone's asked the questions, I will close the floor to the public, and we will address the questions um, one by one. After we've done that, we'll reconvene as a board and have a second round of discussion, and then we will vote on each item one by one in terms of making a recommendation to the village board. Okay? So at this time, I'd like anyone that intends to give testimony or ask a question, make a statement, to please stand and be sworn in by the village attorney. If you could please uh, rise so, and raise so, your right hand. So this is even if you, you you're, even if you're not sure, it's best to just stand up and be sworn in. So. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You may be seated. Okay. At this time, I'll turn the floor over to the representatives from Aldi. And um, uh, you, you need you still need, even though the microphones don't seem to work, they are working for the recording. So um, as as you do speak, please use a microphone. Uh, state your name and affiliation and, and address for the record, please. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. You're just going to have to talk really loud so sure. we can hear and they can okay. hear. Okay. Thanks for everyone's time tonight. My name is John Schottish with Kensington Development Partners based out of Oak Brook, Illinois. We're the retail developers of the proposed Aldi's. Tom Howe, the director of real estate for Aldi out of Oak Creek, Wisconsin. I've uh, been with the company for almost 11 years and look forward to talking to you tonight about our project. First, I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight, um, everyone in the audience and, and also planning and zoning boards uh, time 
We really appreciate it. You know, we look forward to the presentation, answering any questions you have. We're, we're open to all ideas and suggestions. Um, also want to thank staff. We've been working with staff for about seven months now. I think our first kickoff meeting was in April this year. Lots of back and forth, working on the site plan, on the elevations, on various concepts. Um, they, they've been very tough, but, but fair and, and always um, transparent and honest, so we appreciate that. Um, I'll go ahead and start with the uh, first slide. This is just a slide showing the overall aerial, kind of a zoomed out perspective of the subject property as mentioned before. It's two and a half acres roughly at the northwest quadrant of Grand and Hutchins. Aldi's has been very interested in building a store to service the Gurney Market, Lake County residents and the surrounding communities over the last eight to 10 years scouring east and west along Grand Avenue. A lot of the opportunities are owned by single landowners that aren't sellers or their larger shopping centers restricted by grocery. So it's been a challenge to find the right site. So we're excited about this opportunity today. Uh, the, the next slide is more zoomed in and, and staff touched upon this, but just to reiterate, it's the current site is an unincorporated Lake County. It's zoned general commercial, uh, grocery stores, a use by right. We, we have chosen to work with Gurney into the future annexation into the village of Gurney um, for the Gurney address and also have the great services Gurney provides. Based on the Gurney comprehensive land use plan, it's commercial business use, which grocery stores also permitted. So this C2 zoning classification working with staff seemed like the most logical uh, zoning due to the adjacent um, zoning classification comprehensive plan to, to the east and, and southeast. And, and once again, the um, grocery store is permitted within the C2 zoning classification. Next slide, please. I'm gonna turn it over to Tom. Um, he's obviously could answer all the questions related to all these um, and he's, you know, we brought all of our consultants here, just to let you know we have our engineer consultant, our traffic consultant, um, our landscape architect. Uh, we, we were able to meet with the residents a handful of weeks ago, got a lot of good feedback, positive and a lot of negative feedback, and we, we listened, and we made sure that we updated the traffic study, made some changes, and you know, we wanna be good neighbors and long-term neighbors. We know it's never nice to be adjacent to commercial, but you know, it is zone commercial, so we want to listen and, and be good future neighbors to all the residents, Lake County and, and Gurney residents. Tom? Uh, just to speak on behalf of Aldi, uh, we are an excellent retailer as a grocery retailer within the U.S. market, and we've reached 1,800 stores in the U.S. market, and we're continuing to grow. Um, across the nation, there's been a lot of retail uh, reports out there of store closures while we've been expanding and opening new stores across markets. And I think that's something that's exciting for us to look at this opportunity. And I've been driving in the Gurney market for almost six years now, trying to locate a spot for an Aldi store. So to be here tonight um, is a big accomplishment for us to be at this point. So in regards to Aldi, if you've never shopped Aldi, um, we don't carry every product. We're an exclusive um, discount grocer that has a select number of products. It's roughly around 1,500 products in the store right now within our market. And we don't carry everything, but we carry a very large majority of those everyday items that you need. And we've expanded rapidly in our product lines over the last few years, increasing our fresh offerings, our organic offerings, and we also carry some national brands. So our selection right now is roughly 10% national brands and 90% of our exclusive brands or generic brand labels that we carry throughout the store. And then also we've increased our amount of non-food items with our special buy offerings. We bring in specialty products once a week. Um, this week was the advent calendar. If you guys are big uh, wine fans, there was a wine advent calendar released today. Um, so there's a lot of exciting buzz out there with Aldi across the nation. And we're excited to talk more about that with questions that you may have. If you've never been in an Aldi, if you wonder about the quarter cart system, if you want to know why you have to bag your own groceries, I can answer all those questions. I worked in operations before I went into real estate and I still handle things with operations on a day-to-day -day basis. And I work with the employees and the store uh, staff of store associates and store managers at the local level and handle all permitting and approval for all stores. Um, so I'm very involved with the operational side of the business. Uh, our typical hours are from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Sunday. And for a new project, we anticipate to hire eight to 10 full-time employees and possibly two to three casual employees. 
Um, and in this market, we do expect this store to be a very high success store for us. Um, the village of Gurney is one of the best retail quarters within, re within Lake County, and we've wanted to locate here for a very long time. Um, so to go on to our, our consultants that we brought here today, I'd like to pass on and introduce to you um, our tractor engineer, Javier. Good evening. My name is Javier Milan. Everybody can hear me? Okay. Speak up. I'm a senior consultant with KLOA Incorporated, and we were retained or, uh, to conduct the traffic study for the proposed development. Uh, if you could go to the next, uh, thank you. Um, as proposed, the uh, by the way, I'm so sorry. KLOA, it's in Rosemont, 9575 West Higgins Road. Thank you. Uh, as proposed, the, the site will be developed with an Aldi grocery store, approximately 21,000 square feet, and it will be providing approximately 98 off-street parking spaces. Access uh, to the Aldi grocery store is proposed to be provided via cross access to the existing Fifth Third uh, Bank to the east, which will then, you know, allow vehicles to exit onto Grand Avenue via the right in, right out. And there's also a proposed full access to the north uh, onto Woodland Terrace that will be lining up opposite Douglas Terrace. Uh, I think it's very important for me to point out that given Grand Avenue's designation as a strategic regional arterial by the state of Illinois, and given that there is already an, a right in, right out, the state of Illinois Illinois will not allow an additional access point onto Grand Avenue. Uh, <clears throat> inspection of the site, and when, when I was looking at the aerial and went to the site, uh, certainly shows that the property was clearly designed to share the access with the Fifth Third Bank and share that uh, right in, right out. Uh, but apparently the access, to the best of my knowledge, was not properly recorded. However, after a month of working with the neighbor, the developer has been able to agree on a reciprocal access uh, easement at the right in, right out, along with proper striping and stop signs to the fifth third lot to improve safety. The development has also granted reciprocity or reciprocal access throughout the development, so if fifth third ever gets redeveloped, it will give Gurney the opportunity to consolidate access on Woodland uh, Terrace. Moving on to the proposed access drive on Woodland Terrace, uh, inspection of the traffic counts that we conducted as part of the traffic study clearly shows that the access drive serving the bank uh, carries very little traffic. Uh, based on the counts, it carries a total of five or less inbound and outbound vehicles uh, during the peak hours. This minimum volume of traffic utilizing the bank drive will result in minimal conflicts with uh, turning vehicles. Uh, and as such, although the proposed access drive does not meet the minimum uh, distance or separation required in the zoning ordinance, the access drive as proposed will be lined up with Douglas Terrace, which is good planning practices, trying to avoid offset intersections. And uh, that minor offset of the driveways, you know, coupled with the low volume of traffic will have minimal impact on the operations of the intersections. We also looked at historical data from Aldi, and the proposed Aldi store generates a very low volume of daily truck traffic. Approximately, it's eight to 10 trucks per week. And given the existing weight limit restriction on Woodland Terrace, uh, west of Douglas Terrace, trucks will travel to and from the east on, uh, to Hutchins Road and to the south onto Grand Avenue. Uh, notwithstanding this, Aldi will instruct and direct their suppliers to, to, uh, on the truck route and we'll also install signs prohibiting truck traffic from traveling on Woodland Terrace west of the site. As I mentioned, we conducted traffic counts, and based on the traffic counts, we can see what are the patterns, what are the travel patterns in the area. So based on those, it is anticipated that 45% of the traffic will actually uh, utilize the existing right in, right out on uh, Grand Avenue, and 55% will utilize the proposed full access drive on Woodland Terrace. Of that 55%, we anticipate that 5% will travel to and from the west on Woodland Terrace, and that traffic that we anticipate, that 5%, it's gonna be local traffic from all of the residences to the west and the north. Given that there is no traffic signal at the intersection of Grand Avenue with Grandwood Drive, any traffic that is coming from the west on Grand Avenue will certainly find it much appealing and easier to make a left at the signal of Grand Avenue and Hutchins, go up north, make a left onto Woodland Terrace, and then enter Aldi. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. 
So as I mentioned, you know, uh, in order to ensure a safe and efficient internal intersection with the Fifth Third Bank, we recommended some modifications, which are shown in here. Uh, stop signs and painted stop bars should be installed on all the approaches except for the inbound approach from Grand Avenue. Uh, the reason for that is to ensure no backups extend onto Grand Avenue. The southbound approach from the drive through lane should be narrow via restriping in order to better direct vehicles and align southbound traffic at the proposed four-legged intersection. And lastly, one way and do not enter signs should be provided uh, at the drive through exit lanes. So based on the traffic analysis conducted, the following was concluded. The proposed Aldi store will generate a low volume of daily truck traffic. The proposed cross access to the existing right in right out uh, access drive of Grand Avenue serving the Fifth Third Bank will allow side traffic to access the development directly from Grand Avenue, reducing traffic traversing Hutchins Road and Woodland Terrace. This cross access connection between Aldi and, uh, and the bank parking lot was always planned and will not adversely impact the drive through traffic or the bank traffic entering and exiting Grand Avenue. And based on the results of the capacity analysis that we conducted, all of the intersections have sufficient reserve capacity to accommodate this additional traffic. Uh, I'll turn it over to Matt Carey. Thank you. Um, my name is Matt Carey. I'm the civil engineer on board to assist with the project. We're with Pinnacle Engineering Group out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. Um, I want to elaborate a little bit more on the site plan itself. Um, staff did touch on the 25-foot um, hardscape setback off of Grand Avenue, and this exhibit displays in a little bit greater detail. Um, for, for those that um, aren't familiar with the site, on this exhibit, north is pointing to the right, just for a reference point. Um, on the southwest portion of the site, you can see that dark blue hatching. That is the area we are in compliance with the, the setback. Um, but if you can see a little bit further to the southeast, there's that small red sliver. That's the, basically the area of the site that we're encroaching upon that setback. Um, again, the reasoning for this is trying to maximize the site itself, fit everything we can in there, um, maximize the parking count. And then also, if you see the actual alignment with the driveway with the bank to the east, um, that driveway, that, that drive through lane basically needs to carry through our site to the west. And that basically sets up that whole parking field at the south end of the site. Um, therefore, and the other key point I think I wanted to mention that staff did touch on is, again, the angled alignment of the right-of-way along Grand relative to our site plan itself. Um, next slide, please. Um, in addition to that variance, we're also seeking the special, a special use permit for the amount of green space within the parking lot itself. Um, another site plan exhibit is shown here. The areas in green are the actual areas that count towards that, which we have about 9.3%. And per village code, we need to achieve 10%, um, which is why we're seek seeking the special use permit. Um, again, with this, um, we're kind of stuck with the site, squeezing as much into it as we can. Um, again, trying to maximize the parking, aligning with the driveway to the bank to the, to the east, but then also um, for the truck to get in and out of the dock along the north side of the, of the site. Um, it does require quite a bit of pavement. Um, and some hatched striping to be put down as opposed to a green space island, um, which is the reasoning why that configuration is the way it is. Um, next slide, please. In, a, in addition to the site plan, there's just a few other things, high level things related to the civil design of the site that I want to touch on as well. Um, this is just a, a quick look at what we have proposed uh, grading wise for the site. Um, for those that aren't quite familiar with the site, how the way it exists today. Um, everything kind of funnels to a low depression area along the west side of the site. Um, and it, I believe in, in larger rain events, it actually ponds somewhat and overtops into the Linda Lane turnaround, which is on the western side of the site. Um, and what we're proposing as a result of this development is to uh, deviate from that and actually um, send a portion of the drainage to the north and a portion to the south. Um, so to the, what we have proposed to the north is a dry detention basin, which will either end up being basically a grass bottom uh, dry detention pond, or it'll be what's referred to as a bioretention pond, which is basically an engineered media soil that's put down with some plantings that go along with it. And just one thing I want to make clear is that it will not be an open water 
pond. It'll only it'll be dry on a normal day. Um, it'll only be full. It'll only fill up with water during a storm event itself. Um, and at the south end of the site, based on the limited amount of green space we have, um, we have to do an underground chamber, which is basically an underground pond, which sits under the parking lot itself. Um, that'll handle drainage from the south parking lot and the building itself, and will ultimately discharge into Grand Avenue at the end. Next slide, please. Um, and, and last year, I just wanted to touch on what we have proposed for just basic utility connections for the site. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but on the western edge of the property, there's a, there's a blue line there. That's where we're going to bring in water service for both fire and domestic to the building itself. That's connecting into an existing public main within the Linda Lane right of way. Um, along the northwest corner of the site, there's a red line shown there. That's where the proposed sanitary lateral for the site's going to be. That's connecting into the Woodland Terrace public main. And then um, within the parking fields themselves, there's some green lines shown there, and those that, that's storm sewer conveyance piping, which is basically routing the parking lot and the building to the detention areas, which I mentioned on the last slide. Um, and with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to the landscape architect to fill you in a little bit more. Good evening. I'm Mike Davis from Insight Landscape Design in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Um, we worked on the landscape design for this project and the site lighting. Um, we tried to be very cognizant of uh, the neighbors, the residential naval components to both the north and the west. I personally live next to a commercial property, my entire north side of 500 feet. So I get the fact that it's, it can be a challenge. So part of that, there was an emphasis in the plan to put a variety of upright plant material to somewhat mask the building and, and have a variety of color year round with upright evergreens, variety of needle types, uh, different size trees. So you have understory trees and skyline trees and it, it, to basically provide layers of plant material. So it's not just a single row. If something were to die, then you've got basically, it's like a, you're having a tooth punched out and it, it basically clouds the vision of the building when you change vantage points because you have layers of landscaping versus a single layer. <clears throat> in the rear and the sides of the, the rear, the north and the west side of the building, we tried to put, you know, again, uh, plant material that both interacts with the person as they're walking or standing across the street and also larger plant material above it. So there's there's several different varieties of upright evergreens and so there's a, and then several different varieties of both ornamental and skyline trees and then we have uh, a couple different varieties of perennials but then more uh, more perennial grasses in a commercial environment they just tend to be a bit more hardy and you get a bit more year-round coverage with some of the perennial grasses if if they are left and uncut through winter time it gives give something to look at and even for wildlife along with some, some of the plant materials got ornamental berries and uh, crab apples have ornamental fruits for the wildlife um, <clears throat> being there. Um, next slide. This kind of gives an idea if you were west of the building of the mature growth of the plant material. So we're, we're showing the fence, the buildings beyond and there's all the different varieties of trees, both. We took, we took it, um, we wanted to place plant material on both sides of the fence. So the neighbors to the west weren't just looking at the fence first. So we softened it up with some, both trees and understory plant materials on the west side of the fence. And then we have some on the other side of the fence as you get towards the building. Next slide. This again is the, the view then looking from the north to the south. And there's, there's several layers. It looks like a lot and it's not all just in a row. You've got basically two or three layers of plant material as you get to the building because you've got the buffer along the roadway. You've got the, the pond, dry pond itself. Then you've got the plant material, the rows as you get towards the building. So 
that is again tries to give you several layers to kind of mask the building so you, you're just not looking at the back of the building and screen the loading docks and the dumpster enclosure and things like that to be cognizant of those things. Uh, next slide. And yeah, there you go. <coughs> um, we put the we put the lighting plan together. Um, all these got certain requirements for public safety. So whether you're parked in the parking lot, there's the proper amount of foot candles where you're at for public safety and for, you know, so you can, you see what's in front of you, whether it's ice or, or an, something that you could trip on a branch. So um, being very cognizant of the neighbors, the, all the fixtures are LED, but also have house side shields on them. So we're trying to minimize the glare as much as possible. And I believe um, we're, we're achieving very, very low, you know, foot candle levels at the property lines. I'm going to turn this back over to Tom from Aldi's to discuss building signage. Uh, we worked with the staff quite a bit with the signage and Tracy. Uh, thanks for all the help and the clarifications and the sign codes and understanding them. We're proposing two signs um, that are roughly nine by eight feet, uh, roughly 76 square feet in total on, on both the tower sides of the building, on the south side and the east side of the building. Um, and we've met the different requirements with the building, um, or not with the building, but with the sign code requirements in regards to that sign being opaque and uh, projecting the letters out in the logo itself. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. And going into the architecture, uh, we, we listened to staff um, to meet different requirements and we do have a few of the variances um, that we have applied for to discuss tonight. In regards to the architectural design, um, we do have a, a wide variety of different materials on the top elevation, which would be the south elevation facing Grand Avenue. Um, you can see that we have a split face block, block at the lower level with the water table with the sandstone stone on top of that. And then we also have a, a belt and brick blend of your um, standard size brick and the pilasters that are an accent color brick that are a complementary color uh, to break in between the different um, components of the building. And then we also have aluminum composite paneling of sunshades above the windows. We do have some spandrel glass. The spandrel glass that we do have that was mentioned already is in regards to either a restroom or the view of safety um, or the view that would be going into the building um, itself that we can discuss further as needed. And on the tower elevation um, design, the top of the tower stands at 24 feet with the secondary tower in the lower um, section there. The paneling where the sign field is at is actually an aluminum composite panel and it's a bright silver aluminum composite panel. I have some of those materials with me and I also have a sample of the Nichiha panel, which is a cementitious um, fiber board that's to the left that complements and pulls all the different um, modern looking colors together. Um, it's a very high quality construction um, building material that's built to last. Uh, that's one thing that we take a lot of pride in with the design of our Aldi buildings. And I have pictures um, of the actual building itself, of real pictures of all the material that I can pass around to you if you have questions or if you want to see what the actual brick pattern looks like, because it's very hard to see this in the rendering at times with just the blend of the colors. And on the rear elevation, we worked with staff, um, the actual north elevation, which is the second one down. And we incorporated the spandrel glass windows on the truck dock bump. Um, and on the poster board here in front of me, I can point out, we, we work with staff in this area um, quite a bit in regards to the landscape design of the buffer for the residential. But we also went ahead and incorporated a masonry screen wall um, on the retaining truck dock wall to help block that <coughs> visibility um, from the grade itself and the view in and with the recessed dock. Our actual dock comes down at roughly about four feet from grade. Um, with the additional six foot screen wall. Uh, so from a visibility standpoint, during a truck delivery, they might see a portion of the top of the canopy of the truck, um, but with the landscaping as well, they should not see that visibility of the truck at any time. Uh, but in regards to the design and trying to incorporate features within the truck dock bay and the symmetry of this area, um, that's why we did not actually incorporate some of the different features here because of the in and out from, um, for the refuge or for the truck services itself. So we incorporated our architectural designs on the actual bump out that wouldn't have truck traffic. Um, I can answer more questions in regards to the elevation uh, as we proceed. You can go to the next slide. 
and we can go ahead and start with questions. Okay, thank you very much. Sounds like we have sound now. Okay. Um, as I mentioned before, the first uh, round of discussion here will be amongst the members of the Planning and Zoning Board. Um, what I'd like to do is go through, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're hot again. Um, what I'd like to do is go through the, the five items that we need to make a recommendation to the Village Board one at a time. So first one, um, with regard to changing the zoning from, basically it's the same zoning except the jurisdiction is changing from county to village. Does, does anybody have any questions or comments about that? Yes, yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Chairman, do we know how long it's been zoned commercial under the county? I do not. No. I do not. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or? Yes. Yes, Dick. Um, well, I, I think one advantage of bringing it into the village is, is simply why we're here tonight. It'll give the village more control. This property is pretty much inside what we would consider. Okay, but, but our, our purview is whether or not it's appropriate to... Well, I, I believe it is. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments about the zoning aspect? Okay. Um, let's move on to the encroachment in the parking lot. Um, from my personal view, on average, it's okay, and it's kind of a weird situation, a unique situation in, in that regard. While it's not really obvious unless you saw a plot of survey, a plot of survey, Grand Ave Avenue has a slight, like, angle there. Um, I, I'm personally not troubled by it. Uh, Steve or Dave, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I think again, there's a bit of a unique situation because the. Grand Avenue right away is is not square in a sense to the to the property itself. So um, we're getting an average of 25 feet, and I think if we take a look at what we've been able to achieve all up and down Grand Avenue, um, I think it falls in line with what we've been able to achieve elsewhere too. So I think it's uh, reasonable and a, and a very minor request. Any other questions or comments about the the setback? Okay. Um, the, the, the curb separation, um, any thoughts, questions, or comments about that? Is that along the north side of the property? Yeah, that's the, along Woodland Terrace. So the, the game plan is to have the access into the Aldi site line up with the, the residential street that's to the north of the property. That's what I thought. I, yeah. I wasn't sure if that had been changed. So, yeah. uh, so the, the, the issue is the, the bank's curb cut is almost on the property line. So we have two curb cuts that are like five to 10 feet apart and code is 50 feet. Well, my thought was why didn't they share that since they're sharing the one on the other side of the property? There's no way to share that. Kensington approached uh, the bank property owner and asked that same question. They were not able to achieve a grant of easement for that um, access point on the north side of the property uh, like they were on the south side. So they were not willing to negotiate a, a common access on that north end. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments about the curb cut? No. Okay, the next two items are really one item. Um, one concept, if you will, the, the transparency. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Both of, no, the next item is just the transparency uh, on both elevations. Um, any questions or comments about that? As I understand it, we're using materials that are going to look like windows to compensate for the fact that there aren't going to be windows. Is that the essence? <laughs> They're, they're adding spandrel glass to both the north and the south elevations, but even including the spandrel glass, they're still slightly under the 50% for the Grand Avenue frontage. Um, it's, I forget what the percentage is. Let me see if I can find that. I think I saw um, yeah. 42, 42.3% yeah. 42. okay. including the spandrel, and they're supposed to be at 50. Um, for the north elevation, once they include the spandrel glass, they're at 25.7%. And 
and just keep in mind that's the back of the store where the loading dock would be so there's going to be a solid screen wall there so even if they had windows you probably wouldn't see the windows because of the screen wall and and this is a unique situation in that the, the lot is a the lot's a through, a lot, through it, lot it's a through lot that has frontage on two streets okay correct um, yes, I thought they were going to mention something more about that glass. What is what is that spandrel glass? It's an opaque glass for uh, like bathrooms and warehousing area where it's you can't see through it, but it still appears to be like a window. So it lets light into the building still, or not? I think it does, but I, I don't no. know. No, it doesn't. So it's just over. The, it's over something. It's, it's the exact same design as your normal window, but in the inside of the building, it's actually spray foamed behind, and it's actually as if when you're looking at it from the inside, it's a finished wall with insulation on the other side. But from the outside, it looks like the exact same window design, except for the back of it is actually um, has a piece of vinyl um, in it itself or a different type of material that makes it to where the light does not come through to the building and you cannot see through it. Okay, got it. Tracy or, or, or Clara, what, what's the, what was the purpose of having that person, that 50%? I, I don't recall. It was something that the consultant wrote into our code. Uh, it's a relatively new code in 2015. Um, it's a code that is something that we're probably going to revisit because the 50% is extremely difficult for a lot of establishments to do um, so uh, the idea was they we didn't want the back of a right. store or a solid wall um, to be facing a public street um, they have added glass to three areas along the north wall to you know bump it up to um, again 25% with the spandrel um, and about 43% or whatever with the, uh, on the, the south wall. Okay, because I, I just wanted to circle back. It wasn't, it wasn't an attempt to get light into the building. It, it wasn't, it was, it was an aesthetic. aesthetic. It was an aesthetic. It was an okay. aesthetic. I worked on okay. that and right. uh, whether you agree with the, you know, the 50% you can talk about, but it was an aesthetic thing during the discussions that we didn't want a street of just brick walls right. up and down okay. the village. So okay. this requires that you bring some some uh, visual interest to, to my recollection this is the first time we've had this issue and i just wanted to make sure yeah. that we kind of talked about the background of it and everything yeah because this okay. the front doesn't face the front as most of us would consider okay. the street okay any other questions or comments about the, the transparency issue okay um then the final one that we're we're going to make a recommendation on later um is the reduction of the green area uh questions comments about that yeah go ahead i have, I have a question there's a we, if you go back to the slide, there's an area that's kind of like this and then tapers on the end of the parking lot by the, the ramp. There you go. It's kind of, go back, please. Your thumb's too quick. There you, you passed it again there, I think. Put the beer down, go ahead. Oh, that works. Oh, there it is. So that little tapering one on the end, is is that... What is that made of? Could that be green? Here? What were you talking Do you about? Mean, ah, you mean it's the crosshatch spaces. Here? We really need a laser pointer tonight. On the end. Do you mean by woodland yes, terrace? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Matt had mentioned this. Matt likes it when I play engineer. Um, so Matt had mentioned that in order for our truck traffic to ma be I maintained thought. on the site and make sure we do not back in and out any of the roadways, this area is a striped area of okay. pavement. That's what to ensure I, that we can make the appropriate swing yep. in and out without. That's what I thought. I just wanted to be clear. So you really don't have any place to go. Okay. Okay. So, excuse me, people. I, I'll open the floor up later. Okay. So, so that has to be a paved area, is what you're saying, because it's it's not parking. It's striped out not to be parking, but it has to be available for the trucks to use. Okay. Okay. So I'm satisfied with the uh, with the green space. We're talking about the green space yes. less than 10%. Yes. Okay. 
Um, I mean, to me, reviewing the materials before the meeting and looking at the presentation, I think they've maxed out. Um, if they're going to, you know, keep, I believe it was 93 parking 90, stalls. 97. 97. 97. So I mean, I'm satisfied. It's a slight variance below. Okay. Any other comments or observations about the the green space? Okay. At this time, I'm going to open up the floor to the public. Um, I would request that you come up to the, the main microphone one at a time. Um, you, you can stand in line if you like, but um, state your name and address for the record. Um, as I mentioned before, please ask your, direct your questions to us. And then at, uh, after all the questions have been um, submitted, then we'll close the floor to the public and uh, address the questions the best that we can. So whoever would like to start. with the traffic patterns please my name is Cindy Kraft I live on 36195 North Douglas Terrace I'm about five houses from the corner okay uh, can you use the roving microphone please yeah. Yeah. excuse me you need to use the microphone hello yep thank you Currently, we have a right turn in lane here for Hutchins Road. What I can see is a huge potential problem is people are going to stay in this right turn lane, go all the way through this intersection, and then go into here. That needs to be addressed because there are people that are going from Almond to Hutchins Road while people are turning right. Something needs to be addressed here for a safety issue because I can see cars easily going through here, just staying on the shoulder and going into the uh, area for the Aldi. I'm sorry, did you state your name and address? I need yes. to. Yes, oh. Cynthia Kraft, 36195 North Douglas Terrace. Okay, thank you. So this definitely needs to be addressed. You look like you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, the next question I have okay. is regarding the uh, truck traffic. It's going to be minimal, but what if you have two trucks that arrive, one's not finished, you have one waiting. Where would the other truck wait on this plan? <laughs> We take all the questions. We're, we're going to take we, all the questions and, and mass, and then we're going to answer the questions after everyone's had a chance. Um, uh, those are my two big ones. Okay. Thank, th th thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yes. My name is Maria Westfall, and I live on 18391 North Linda Lane, which is the west residential area in that cul-de-sac region. My question is for that residential area right there in that cul-de-sac, is it um, fenced? Because we're gonna get high foot traffic in that local area. Next question, you have the inbound coming into your store on Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue is a high traffic area People make their own lane on that road. Um, and also, it's 50 miles per hour. So if you expect people to drive 50 miles per hour to turn into your store, that's a big question. Because that's going to be avoided and go straight to my lane, which is Grandwood Park Drive and Grand Avenue, which is near the businesses of Mobile Station and Backyard Steak Pit. Now, I'm right at the corner, and I see the accidents that has gone on. We've had deaths. We have had extreme situations like that in that street. Now, on Grandwood Park, we have children that walk in that area. So you have, uh, what is it, 35 miles per hour. People divert the buses. With that respect, you have bus for elementary Woodland and high school from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, on Woodland Terrace. 
right before that store. So even if you do have truck designated driving areas, we are concerned for the safety of our children. I have witnessed my older children's buses be overtaken by cars zooming there to avoid the traffic on Grant. Especially okay? during construction. Yes. One like at a time, please. Mm -hmm. Like we're living in right now, the road construction has diverted all that traffic into our residential space area. Why? Um, it's 35, but you know, who abides by that? Also, Linda Lane takes parking for the restaurants right there. Uh, backyard steak pit and saludos are right there, kitty corner to my residence. So our front yard is a parking space. So I'm afraid that your store parking is not going to be enough, that our residential space that is not lit will get high traffic, foot traffic, as well as car traffic. And we have young children in that neighborhood. Nobody cares because there's a cul-de-sac, so they will use that to turn around and divert because they made a wrong turn. Um, so that, those are the two takeaways here. My main concern is that that dry bed area needs to be fenced in. Because like I said, that is a bus stop. The kids are going to use that. They're going to play with, with that because, you know, it's a slip and slide. If it's raining, it's a snow slide during the winter. So that, those are my main concerns. It's for the kids' safety as well as our residents' safety. We also have a mobile station that has gotten already robbed twice within six months. So you're causing our residential safety to increase to having this property here. Another vital, you know, pocket cash for somebody desperate. That's all I have. Okay, C could you do me one favor? Could you go up to the map and show me where y you're asking for a fence? Fences? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so, here's our area where we live. Right. That needs to be fenced off because we're going to get high foot traffic areas and people will like to park there, there, here. There is, a fence, there is a fence there according to the plan. Okay. Okay. But is it close all the way through, sir? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, this dry bed area to compensate for the water drainage. Right? Yes. Is that fenced in? No. Because here's the bus stop. Right there. Right there. Right That's there. a school right bus stop. Mm -hmm. You have elementary children and high school children. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, please. I guess I'm next. My name is David Day. I live at 36119 North Douglas. My property. Okay, okay. No, please, please, sir. You, you need you need to use the microphone if you're going to. Okay. My name is David Day. I live at three six one one nine North Douglas Terrace. My property will be located right there, where you see North Douglas, right over to Hutchins. I have lived there since two thousand seven, and I've seen the progress that has gone on. As the young lady. Pointed on out one, you do have 50 mile an hour traffic going down here. You are going to have to put in a separate lane for a right turn lane into that doggone lot for one. Two, you're going to have this eastbound traffic that is going to have to come up Hutchins, go over to Woodland, and come into here. It's the only way that they're going to come in or they're going to be making U turns into there. That's two. Number three, you're going to have a truck. The, uh, two years ago, they did, uh, they did Hutchins here, all right? They did all the sewers. Now they use trucks to come on in here. These trucks would come on in, they would go up my grass and get in to here, just to get into Woodland Terrace, a, a semi-truck, all right? They would come all the way up by the sidewalk, and then you're asking to bring trucks into this area that have one children, constant children, not only from over here, they walk over here, they walk over here, the buses are here, the buses are here, there's handicapped children over here, he's not here today, all right? You're asking a lot of traffic into this area. Location is everything. Aldi is a good store, I go to it, all right? But to put an Aldi here is not a good idea. 
all right, because you are going to be, all right, you are going to be creating a lot of traffic. You're going to be putting in, uh, is this where your docks is? Where are your docks going to be located at? Ex excuse me, don't it? I Please. work in the shipping business. Excuse me, for 16 sir. Years. Excuse me, sir. All, right. All your questions need to be addressed to us. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The, the I, I don't know where they're putting their docks on in. Okay. There's going to be noise all day. All right. My wife works all night. She's a nurse. All right. And you're asking me to sit there and say from 9 a.m., 8, 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. All right. Now my, how my wife is going to sleep. My house is right there. I am going to get noise and I'm going to get vandalism. My property is not fenced in. It's beautiful. People love to come in and look at my landscape. Now I have to fence it up. Who's going to pay for that? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, could we have the microphone, please? Oh, okay. My name's Herb Messner. I live at 36151 North Edgewood Drive. My big concern is runoff. We have runoff coming through Grandwood Park that is unbelievable. I moved into Grandwood Park in 64, and I've never seen Grandwood Drive flood like it has in the past year and a half because of all the development. Now my concern is, where is the retention going to drain to? That's my, one of my questions. Okay. And the other thing is, they keep talking about that dry pond. Is it going to stay dry with the clay bottoms that we have? Will we have water that's stagnant, full of mosquitoes and weeds like we have in front of the bank now where their retention is, which probably goes down hill to Grandwood Drive? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nancy Tomaszewski. I live at 18254 West Woodland Terrace. And we would like to, as neighbors, we'd like to request the following. We want an established bus stop. Um, we want to request at all these expense in conjunction with the Highway Township Committee to build a pad that is designated for the, the children with the bus stops based on the guidelines provided by the township and from the school. And in the news, we've had so many children being killed or maimed because of bus stop issues and bus stops. We have a ton of kids on Woodland Terrace. That is where all the buses go. And right now, we, I'm not sure if you realize, but because there's been a light that's been put on Hutchins and Grand, Woodland has become the raceway. Hey, how do I avoid the traffic on Grand? Let's zoom through the, the subdivision. We've requested surveys to have stop signs put on. We, it, nothing has happened. We've been requesting this for years. So now we're just adding more traffic to it. Um, directly across from all these, and um, where they're trying to open up from Douglas, there's a special needs student. That's where the special need buses come. They all come to that corner. So now we've made it a, ban a dangerous corner. In addition to that, um, we'd like to request a berm in addition to the landscaping. So we want something that's higher elevated if the store is going to go in. Um, right now, the lighting, we're requesting that there's no spillage or pointing into the neighborhood properties. And lighting with all the signage um, should be evenly distributed and energy efficient. We want modified delivery schedules, no weekends, limited de deliveries before 8 a.m. on weekdays. Um, we'd like as Herb mentioned, we'd like to research and analyze if there will be impact to the Grandwood Park drainage. We've had a ton of flooding in the last five years, and this was an area that n did not flood before. So there, there's definitely something going on. Um, no parking spaces uh, shall be converted to compact car spaces to increase the total number of parking spaces. The landscape to include bike racks. The number and location of these racks should be reviewed and approved by the village landscape architect. Provide screening from all sides for the rooftop units and utilize a metal roof mounted system. Um, any cart returns shall be in the same aesthetics design and quality of that of Mariano's. We want the, the neighborhood to look nice. We, d we, we don't want a bunch of carts roaming around the neighborhood. Um, provide screening from, uh, I have that, any cart returns 
um, neighbors to work with the developer and Aldi on identifying appropriate tree species, shrubs, and plants. If it's coming in, the neighbors want to say. Um, include parking lot islands, medium spaces that are irrigated. So once you put in the greenery, how are you going to make sure that it stays green and it doesn't become a bunch of weeds? It is happening with the bank right now. Um, no overnight parking or idling of trucks shall be allowed. And delivery trucks are prohibited from using the woodland entrance to back into the property. So that has been an issue, as one of the other neighbors mentioned. We've had semis do some very strange things on Woodland Terrace. We have constant kid traffic. So we need to figure out how do we protect our kids and how do we reduce noise and how do we reduce lights. I mean, I know they, I'm not sure if, you, if the board really cares, but really the neighborhood is opposed to this because it's not a neighborhood anymore. It's, we're very quaint, we're quiet, we're friendly, everybody knows each other, and this just is, is kind of wrecking havoc in our area. So thank you. Can I ask one follow-up question before you leave the microphone? Oh, where, where are you asking for the berm to be? At the berm on the north side by Woodland Terrace. Okay, thanks. Thank you. My name is Lila Chandy. I live uh, on 36133 North Douglas Terrace. So my, I am uh, my neighbor Dave's. Uh, my house is right next to him. Second house in the corner of uh, uh, Woodland and uh, Douglas. I don't want to repeat uh, some of the things that have already been said because I do support that. So I just want to read a statement. <clears throat> I have been a resident of Grandwood Park since 1990. My home is just 50 steps from the proposed Aldi store. I am here to express my objection to this proposal. For the last 28 years, I have enjoyed the peace and quiet of my neighborhood. I have considered my neighborhood, neighborhood to be safe, no traffic congestions, safe for the children in our neighborhood to play, safe for our children to wait for their buses early in the morning and to come home in the afternoon. I believe the, uh, the proposed Aldi store will change that landscape of our quiet neighborhood. I don't want to step out of my home to look at a grocery store. Nothing against Aldi, it's a good store. I do believe that a place like Aldi belongs in a commercial area, not a residential neighborhood, although I do realize this area is zoned commercial, but I do consider this as a residential neighborhood. There will be more traffic coming through our neighborhood residential streets, we will jeopardize the safety of our children and the residents. Trucks will be entering through residential street. Um, I am concerned about the value of my home being decreased. As a Grandwood Park community, we strive to make our neighborhood safe. This proposal creates an, atmos an atmosphere of insecurity. I like to ask a question. Why do we need another grocery store when we have Mariano's, Jewel, Sam's Club, Walmart and Target in a one mile radius. Consider putting the safety of our neighborhood over economics. Respect the opinions expressed tonight by Grandwood Park residents. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Michael Westfall. I live at 18391 North Linda Lane. Um, and I want to echo what others have said about the issue um, with Hutchins and Grand. Um, people are going to use that right turn lane into Hutchins and they're going to shoot straight through and turn into the, the store. So that's going to be an issue that's going to increase accidents there. We live right on the corner across from the gas station. We see it all the time. They use the right turn lane into Grandwood Drive. They go past it and then turn into the gas station. There have been many, many accidents there, several severe accidents and at least one fatality since we've lived there. So that has to be addressed. But my bigger concern is that if you follow Hutchins South, it turns into Almond Road, which down Almond Road, you're gonna find uh, Woodland Middle School and uh, Warren Township High School. Um, many kids, including ours, um, walk to school on occasion or ride their bikes they have to cross that intersection. So right there is where those cars are gonna jump across that, um, that turn lane. And that could endanger those kids waiting to cross that road. 
Um, the other issue that um, I want to raise is the exit point for the parking lot onto Woodland Terrace. Um, I thought in previous discussions that that was going to be a right turn only, but in the diagrams here, it looks like it's more of a left turn only, um, which would put it in right into um, Grandwood Park. So I just I want to clarify that that is indeed going to be a non left turn into our neighborhood, and it's going to be a right turn only. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how's it going? My name is uh, Noe Mercado. I live on 18349 Linda Lane. Um, I had a lot more things to bring up, but this young lady here took a lot of them, so I'll just bring the rest of them up. Um, so on, first on the zoning issue, um, Actually, I think, I don't know if that's been finalized yet, but I know the mayor said it was up to her. I guess my question is, what are the tax benefits for Grandwood Park, if any? Or if this is just going to be zoned in a gurney, and if there's going to be anything basically for Grandwood Park um, Civic Association. Um, also, I just wanted to ask, can this be appealed? I don't know if there's a process for that, but I just wanted to ask if that could be appealed or if someone we could talk to about that. Um, the parking lot setback, that really doesn't bother me, but the entrance, just like everyone else on Woodland Terrace does, um, I totally get that you guys have to do a variance because it's within the 25 feet like you mentioned. To me, it just seems like you're adding another space that people are going to have to cross through when they're walking, um, and you're just making it very unsafe for pedestrians because now you've got that big chunk that they kind of have to walk through and look out for not one but two, um, you know, two sets of traffic coming out of both of those places. Um, I totally understand that the bank probably wouldn't want you guys to go in through their entrance, um, but I'm just not sure how that just falls on, on our neighborhood. Um, I mean, I just feel like, you know, there's one entrance into AutoZone, which is also off of Grand. It's got a pretty bad entrance, but it's got one, and they've made it work for many years. Um, I don't know. I just also wanted to ask you guys how it would make sense to all of you to do that curb cut as well. Um, I know you guys also mentioned Illinois would not allow a second curb cut on Grand Avenue. So again, I'm asking you, the Planning Zoning Board, how you would allow it for a residential street on Woodhurn Terrace. I also wanted to ask, on every map that I found online, this property is not currently obviously part of Gurney. It's part of Lake County. Um, I mean, it, it, to me, I just don't know how it's just kind of being eaten into um, Gurney. So maybe that's more for uh, Lake County to address, not Gurney. Um, or how you guys can actually make the decision, if it's not currently your property, to do that curb cut onto Woodland Terrace. Um, <clears throat> as far as the transparency, the more windows issue, we already have the bank that kind of looks like a, a jail with no windows. It's just a big brick building. It seems like this is kind of going to follow suit, except for the fake windows that you guys have been adding. And I just wanted to see if we could get a full list of reliefs and concessions that are being made um, to these developers and to all the, in the sake of transparency. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. My name is Joe Roman. I live at 36158 Douglas Terrace. Um, this is the second time I've been to a Gurney zoning meeting. First time was about 20 years ago when they first built the bank. Uh, at that point, at that zoning meeting, the bank wanted to put the driveway in line with Douglas Terrace. Uh, I spoke up against that, that proposal. Uh, because of the bus stop that was uh, at Woodland and, and Douglas. Um, so, and the, the, the bank and, and the board, in their wisdom, decided to offset that driveway. One of the things that concerned me uh, about that entrance was not necessarily because of the bank customers, but because at that point in time, there was going to be a medical building uh, right next to, uh, about where the Aldi's going to be built right now. And I was, I was concerned about people with medical ailments at the time 
uh, making bad decisions when they're turning when a, when a school bus is there. Um, so by offsetting that driveway, uh, I, and I, I'm sorry, let me back up. That driveway was supposed to be a shared driveway between the bank and the medical building. Uh, so anyway, by offsetting that driveway, um, we were able to achieve a degree of separation between the children and the commercial traffic. Um, my, I guess my question is, is there was an agreement back when the bank was first built between the owners of, of the Aldi lot, the, the, the then owners, and the Grand National Bank that this would be a shared driveway. Why is that agreement not in effect now? Um, my, my second question is for the gentleman who did the traffic studies. Um, and you mentioned uh, that, that you had charted all the, the traffic going in and out of the bank. Uh, have you done an updated study since the bank did their major remodeling? And the reason I say that is because uh, there, there were two big things that have affected the traffic patterns at the bank. One is that the north side entrance is no longer a public access. So that has turned into basically just employee parking. Secondly, the ATM has been embedded into the bank building instead of being out towards the, the west uh, um, pro uh, end of the property line. The reason that's important is because if there was a common driveway between the bank and Aldi, the bank traffic and the Aldi traffic really are not going to, to uh, conflict with each other. So I, th I think it's a, ma uh, a mar marriage made in heaven to have a single driveway uh, uh, serving both Aldi and the, uh, and the bank. Thank you. Uh, ju just before you leave, just so we can properly address your question. When was the bank remodeling uh, done? Uh, the, the bank remodeling was completed, I believe, a month and a half ago. Okay, thank you. Two months ago? Okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. My name is George Kuhn. I live at 36147 North Douglas Terrace. I've lived at my house there, I had it built 30 years. My big, big concern is I've seen semi-trucks roll on to Hutchins and make a left-hand turn on the Woodland, and yes, I've seen rivets of truck tires constantly into that yard way, and who's gonna pay for that? And two, there is a handicapped child right on the corner of Douglas and Woodland Terrace. And majority of the students do congregate there for the bus stop. Now in the 30 years I've been there, it's been peaceful, quiet. And again, one of my other neighbors mentioned, why do we need another grocery store? I just, I just can't fathom them. The other situation is, uh, I wanna say the meeting we had at the uh, backyard state pit, I did mention quite a few times, right, if you don't mind. If this proposal was to go through, why is it that all of a sudden we can't get a ingress and egress out off of Grand Avenue? The bank did. Because right now, if you look at where Douglas Terrace is, that is where children are going to be. And I do not want unnecessary traffic there. Before, right where you see the Woodland Terrace signage right there, there used to be a semi-truck that was parked there idling. And there was a complaint made. And guess what? That truck no longer parks there. But it was a nuisance. People trying to get through there, people trying to come back through there, they had to wait. Now, I question the board, I question Anybody else, 
Would you want a store in your neighborhood? I know I don't. Me personally, I would like to see a children's park there. But please, please think about it. What if this all was in your neighborhood? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Maria. I live in 19257 Orlando Lane. My property is right next to the Aldi store. It's the last house at the cul-de-sac at Linda Lane. Uh, when I heard about this thing, it was like I didn't know what to think about because I'm not, you know, as I don't have enough uh, enough knowledge about how the, this thing is going to work. The only thing that I can say is like, I really respect all the people that is right here. They've been living in the neighborhood for years and years. I've been living there only for like four years. I love it. Uh, you might think that because there's not enough young people here, they might not care. Or you might not think that there's a lot of children in the community. They are. And the boss of my daughter, which is six years old, there are at least eight children in that single stop. But if you go to the other one, there's like another seven. Like, that bus is really packed. And also, we have a babysitter, which is my neighbor, and she has like three more kids that sometimes, when the, when the weather is nice, they walk to the bus stop. I'm concerned because sometimes, like all the younger, all the young parents, they need to be working hard to try to build their future. That we work so hard to try to buy a house in a nice and beautiful neighborhood. And now I don't feel like I'm going to have that for my children. So I, do I have to move now and try to buy another house where I can feel safe for my children? So it's, they are a lot of little ones. Not be, the parents are not here because they've been working all day long. I, I barely made it. Someone is taking care of my daughter already just to be here. I'm so sad that all this is about the money only. We barely, I know, I do go to Aldi though because I love the prices, but I'd rather go to drive five more minutes instead of be worried every day about my daughter getting out of a bus, really. So you might be grandparents. You don't wanna do, you don't wanna go to see your grandchildren go through that. Just, I, I, I said something in the chat community. Everybody must be really happy, especially people from our neighborhood that doesn't live really close by. Because it's great for them, because they have like the, the traffic that is going to go through their homes. Well, let's trade the houses. This is, this is a, a nice country. This is a beautiful village. Why don't you just put in our, in our I mean, think about it, really. When you make that decision, think that that children that is going to take the bus is your children, not mine. Thank you. Thank you. This is Nancy Tomaszewski again, 18254 Woodland Terrace. I did forget to ask one thing. There's a lot of abandoned spaces. Um, car dealerships, Lowe's is obviously going to be leaving Gurney. Isn't there anything that if Gurney is going to annex the land or if Gurney has any power that they can offer some incentives to retrofit buildings? And instead of us having all these abandoned spaces and the area is starting to look not very good and trashy, that we can take something that's already been zoned commercial and just try to retrofit it. So that's my other question. Thank you. My name is Maria Westfall, 18391 North Linda Lane. My question is for the, um, the trees and the green area that you're talking about. Who will be plowing that area? Is it us that's gonna be paying for that? And will we continue to have clean streets? Our neighborhood is wonderful because our streets are plowed. If we get high traffic area zone like that on Woodland Terrace, it's gonna affect our residential space of how clean it is to get out. And that is one of the things that's wonderful because of Woodland Terrace is plowed cleared as well as the other residential area because of the kids being pulled for busing. 
So I just want to make sure that the trees, the greenery that you're talking and putting in place is going to be taken care of and not left abandoned. And if it does go into our yardage, is that going to be taken care of? Because like I said, I live across mobile station, we get the garbage and that needs to be addressed. The field right there is an inbound hub for mice and all creatures that we get raccoons, we get woodchucks in our backyards, we get turtles. So you're just adding foliage, food for these animals and food, groceries that you're gonna have in your dumpsters. So who's gonna take care of that and how? My name is Pat Ruman. I live at 36158 Douglas Terrace. So it's a good point about the um, snow removal because that's now part of Warren Township, which does an excellent job with snow removal. If we get a next, that area gets a next by Gurney, I don't know what your snow removal is like. It's not too impressive along Grand Avenue, but in our area, it's great. Um, the other thing is that my husband is a real um, a person who digs in and looks for information. So he tells me it was 25 years ago that that area was zoned commercial. So we've been living there for 31 years. And I have to say that if I was buying a house, I wouldn't want to put myself near these commercial buildings. I wouldn't want to put myself near a grocery store. And that's really a, a, a huge concern for me, is the property value. I'm also concerned about the lighting throughout the day. So obviously, you know, it, you know how, how late are the lights on at night? It's nice to live in a quiet neighborhood. Is it now going to be lit up all the time? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm back. Uh, 3611 Douglas Terrace to Gurney. The young lady did make a big point about the garbage. That is one thing that I would have to be concerned about too, and I don't know if you would be too. All right, all these are going to be using a lot of garbage. And we, this area is very windy. All right, and it blows, and it's going to blow into the residential areas on top of it. And uh, you're, I don't know if we could even, what impact study or anything that anybody has done, all right, but you are, your, your concern is with the curbs, I guess, is the only concern. And that curb is going to have to be really pretty big for trucks to come in, pull in, back up to back into a dock because they're going to have to back into the dock eventually. And this is also going to create noise. Are they, are they going to have noise prevention All right, for the community on the fencing? I, I, there was another slide that I, it was like a, um, I think it's the next one or two forward, all right, that showed like a fencing type thing, but I couldn't get a good grasp at it. Uh, yeah, the, the one with the black, no, go back. The, uh, the slanted lines over here, what is that? I really the can't blue see lines? it. Right here. We'll, we'll answer all the questions at the end. But. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know if that's a wall or that they're going to build as uh, a, a green area that is not going to prevent any noise. And where are the docks located at? Is that the two slots right there? All right. That is going to be right there by Linda Lane and these other commercial things. And that noise is going to come at, at any time of day. That noise is going to come facing everybody. Because that's right in the residential area instead of towards the grand area. All right. I, I don't know. <laughs> we, we, we can't do anything to stop it. Progress. But location, location, location. Thank you. Anybody else? Mercado again. 
I just wanted to also ask, as part of the concessions, um, if hopefully we can avoid any sort of signage right off of Hutchins and Woodland, like to avoid having an Aldi, huge Aldi sign there. I mean, it is the entrance to our neighborhood, so we want to avoid a huge Aldi sign right at that corner. Okay. You got that slide up. I'm concerned about the water runoff uh, from the, and I and he talks about this dry well. And Did I you give your name? I moved in in '64. Now we're we're the cul-de-sac. Is that it up there? Right about right about here in the winter time. If it rains like it is right now, kids ice skate there. The water stands about this deep. Because when I walk the dog, I walk through that water. And that's probably going to be pushed over onto Linda Lane. Did he give his name? Can you, excuse me, can you give your name and address? 36151 North Edgewood Drive. Name? Name. Herb Messner. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay, I'm going to close the floor to the public. Um, okay, then I'll open the floor to the public, and you need to use. No, no, you you have to follow the procedures, ma'am. You need to use you use you need to use a microphone. Okay. Okay. You can walk over to the center there. Yeah. I live at 17831 West Salisbury in Bridalwood. My question is- And what's is, your name, please? Oh, Tracy Reeves. Thank you. Um, I've grown up in Grantwood Park. My question is, uh, even through Salisbury, we have a lot of cut through traffic. My husband, I can, I can tell you, <laughs> has said, he, and watch the traffic, people go th on the side, the side of these roads all the time to bypass the lanes of traffic because they don't want to wait. And you're talking about semis coming onto Woodland Terrace where there are, there are a lot of children. But there's also, what is the weight restriction for an 18-wheeler to be on a residential road? I mean, I, and I understand you're going to answer my question after this is all done, but I, I would, I mean, I'm looking at every one of you and I'm thinking, you don't live there. But what if you did live there? Would, would any of you be in our, in, in our seats? Would any of you have taken this into consideration? I hear money and I hear all these. I hear money and I hear all these. That's all I've heard. I heard it at the stake pit. I'm hearing it here now. I'm also hearing that it seems to me like you're taking a piece of property and trying to shove a store onto land that, that it, you're, you're trying to accommodate a store that, well, we might not have this much room. We, we're, we're, we're lacking by this much space. We're, you know, you're going to do all these beautiful things, but, and again, and I'll, re, I'll repeat what Nancy said, I'll repeat what everybody said. There are so many vacant places in Gurney. We have like strip mall deserts. Now we're, we've lost Lowe's, we've lost Sears, we uh, have lost, a, the Panera's moved. I mean, we've got H.H. Uh, Gregg. Things are going out of business, so why is this piece of property your golden goose? For some reason, there's something with this piece of property that is the golden goose. And the ki you know what, the kids, they're not only our kids, there are bicyclists, there are people that walk their dogs. Why not make this, why do we need another grocery store? I mean, it's like having another Walgreens. Why don't we do something safe for the children? But to have 18-wheelers having an access onto Woodland Terrace, 
There has got to be a weight restriction. You cannot have an 18-wheeler on a residential road. It, that's just by law. And my other suggestion would be to all these and whoever did the land, has anybody contacted the sheriff's department to see what kind of fatalities there have been, what kind of traffic they deal with? Squad cars sit there all the time. I can't tell you how many tickets my husband has doled out sitting there in his squad car. I mean, people will bypass these lanes. And I, I'm not sure somebody else said that 50 miles an hour, but then they're going to go down and they're going to go down Grandwood Drive. And I can tell you from the dealerships and things, Salisbury Drive is also a cut through. That's a thoroughfare. I can't tell you how many kids I've grabbed because cars come flying down there. And they, I tell you, the only time I see them hit their brakes is when my husband's car is parked on the road. Or, or and you know, and, and we have another deputy that drives through Bridalwood and it slows down the traffic. But, you know, I mean, you really have to take, you have kids, you have to have kids, you have grandkids, you have, I don't know, but you've got to take that into consideration. Because I would hate for that to be the weight on somebody's shoulders when a kid gets killed. Thank you. Any? Lila Chandy, 36133 North Douglas Terrace. I have a question about the requirement under the C2 uh, zoning. Uh, what is the requirement for, for trucks? Uh, are they permitted? Are the road wide enough? Uh, because I know there are certain requirements for trucks to travel or use certain roads. I'd like to know what the requirement is for trucks to um, come through Woodland. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I'm going to close the floor to the public again. Um, I think the most of the questions had to deal with traffic, so I, I think it would be best if, if the traffic consultant could please. Thank you. I wrote as many as I could, so if I miss one of them, if you could. And I've got a bunch of them too, so we'll just have to make sure we get okay. them, okay. Uh, there was the comments regarding the, the children uh, and the bus stops, you know. One thing that I will offer, it's that Aldi does not open until 9 a.m. So the, the traffic generated by Aldi in the morning doesn't really affect the time when the buses come to pick up the, the children. Yes, you do have the children that come back in the afternoon, uh, and are, uh, are let out there. Uh, yes? Go ahead. No. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, what I wanted to offer is that Aldi does not open until 9 a.m. So Aldi doesn't really generate a significant amount of traffic anywhere between 7 and 9. So, so the impact during the morning when the school buses are picking up the kids is very, very limited. Okay. Uh, it was a question regarding traffic traveling westbound uh, and whether they're going to use the right turn lane to continue straight uh, into, the, into the right in, right out. Uh, I will say this, anything is possible. People, I have seen crazy, crazy things just like everybody has seen it. Uh, we don't believe that's going to be the case, however, if, if it However, if, if, if a problem arises like that, uh, there could be some type of striping that can be done to actually basically alert the driver that, again, that's a right turn lane, and further down is not a straight lane to go in. So that's something that can be discussed with the state of Illinois, you know, because uh, they, they're the ones who actually have jurisdiction over the road. Okay. Uh, in the opposite direction, as I mentioned, based on my observations and... Again, you know, uh, somebody who wants to make a left from Grand onto 
onto the other street, Grand Street or uh, uh, Hutchins, I would prefer to make a left at a signal, especially when it's 50 miles an hour and it's so heavy. Uh, and that's just the typical nature of the driver. They're going to try to find the easiest and safest maneuver that they can do. Uh, there was also a question regarding the traffic counts. Did we do, did we do those traffic counts when the, the bank was remodeled? Uh, we did the counts actually October 23rd and October 20th. So that was about 15 or 18, uh, am I doing the math right, 20 days ago? Mm -hmm. So I believe the bank already had done the remodeling. Uh, There was one question regarding weight restrictions on a, on a residential street. I will have to get back to you with appropriate information, but I will say this. There is a statute in the Illinois Vehicle Code that allows trucks to actually travel through a residential street and through streets that are not designated truck routes for them to actually get to a designated truck route. How long is the distance? I'm, I'm going to say, without looking at the book, it's, it's about three or, f or five miles, you know, that they allow them to get to. But I can get back to you with a specific, you know, answer into that. I, I don't have the, I'm the sure code with me. I'm sure staff can help us send that one. Yeah, I don't yeah. have the code yeah. with me, so I'm not, uh, that's why I'm trying to say that. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sure staff can help us on that one. Okay. Um, regarding the bus stops, what I can say is, and I think staff contacted the, the school district, am I correct in that? The two school districts, Woodland and The, the two school and districts, Warren. and they're the ones who make that decision as to whether they believe the bus stops, you know, uh, should be moved or not. Um, I know that I probably missed some, so if you can go over your questions and ask me that, I would appreciate it. Um, there was a question about the traffic pattern on the right in, right out. Um. Is that the one I thought I, I thought that one went along with when people? Yeah, I, I, it was a tag along to concern about people starting like getting in the right turn, the right and turn continuing lane, straight, and correct, concern, and then concern about the 50 mile an hour speed limit, missing the right in, right out, mm -hmm. and end up going down. One of the things that, that I will with? offer towards that is uh, all the. Uh, just like probably any grocery store, you do have a lot of repeat customers. So this is not like a new, new stop for them. So they know where it is, they know what they can do. Uh, so this is not like, like something that it's new to someone, it's coming and they felt that they missed the entrance, they have to continue, or they didn't know that they could turn there. This is gonna be a lot of repeat customers, so they will know what they can and can't do. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, I don't know if this is a question for you or for someone else. The, the question about the, the adequacy of the, the turning radius for trucks going from Hutchins to Woodland Terrace. Going from Hutchins to Woodland Terrace. Maybe the engineer. Have, have we done any auto turns or do we know? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let him. Yeah. I, I've got a, I, I, I've got, uh, yeah. sir, sir, the floor is closed to the public. I, let, me, let me please go through the list, okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, we have run truck turning movements, especially turning into the store and out of the store. Um, I don't believe we have that as a slide. I think we do actually. Oh, do you, At John? the back. Okay. To the At end. The end. Okay. You guys need to share the microphone though, okay? Okay. I was just saying it's at the very end, um, just in case this question came up. There you go. There you go. There's two of them, trucks turn in and trucks turn out. So this slide, that's the in movement. And then the next slide, I believe, is the out movement from the dock. And where the truck is parked there on the west side, that is the dock there, just for clarification purposes. Yeah. I, I think the question was, was really more off-site. It was like literally the intersection of, of um, Hutchins and, and Woodland Terrace. There, there was a comment made about when um, there was some heavy construction going on that the, sounded like maybe the parkway was getting beaten up quite a bit. Yeah, I believe we did take a look at that. I don't have that okay. movement specifically with me here tonight, but I can get back to the village for sure on that. Okay. So I, I guess the question, the underlying question is if, if the intersection's not adequate over there, who, t who fixes that in the future? we'd ask Aldi to you know, modify that intersection to uh, make it accommodate. Um, my 
I believe that it is adequate to make that movement at this point, though. Okay. Thank you. I was just going to add, okay. we can run the truck turn from Grand Avenue up Hutchinson to Woodland Terrace to show that and provide that to staff. Okay. But just based off of the, the width of the roadways, um, there shouldn't be an issue for the truck to make the turn and avoid the curbs. Okay. Now, as everybody here knows, there are truck drivers that may or may, or may not be um, good drivers, but we do have excellent drivers that we do hire and maintain with our own distribution. Um, so, but there is all, obviously the very possibility of a truck driver, not an Aldi truck driver, going down Woodland Terrace that's lost or anything else that can happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, as, as long as you've got the floor there, um, and we're talking about trucks, there were a variety of questions that kind of were like operational issues. Um, one of them was, um, just, just let me try to find it, just bear with me a second. Um, one was, oh, what, what happens if, if, if one, a second truck shows up and the first one's still there? The, the, how, how are you going to yeah. queue the trucks? Well, I think there are a lot of questions that everybody asked tonight in regards to the trucks, the amount of trucks, idling trucks. Um, so I want to be able to clarify those for you for everything with the truck route. So just to start from the beginning, this area is not an additional truck route. This is a green space area. This is the only truck dock bay. And then in regards to the trucks, um, is there a possibility that two trucks could show up on site at the same time? That is a possibility that could occur. Um, we only have eight to 10 trucks a day and we control our own distribution within- A week. A day? A week. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> eight to 10 trucks. Eight to 10 trucks per week. We, okay. do con we do control our distribution um, out of our facility in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, where we do have those vehicles uh, leave our site and go to the site itself. Then we also have milk that delivers to the site as well. Um, with our milk drivers in coordination with Black Horse, they do communicate to understand when the positioning of the trucks are to occur. Because logistics are all now done computerized with our own services and logistical firms that we utilize, we strive to make sure that our trucks do not have extra time on any roads and that they're utilized um, for the most efficient way possible. Um, we put a lot of time, money, and effort to make sure because that is a huge cost saver for us as a company and to our vendors. So that's something that we do take a lot of pride to make sure we don't have two trucks showing up at the same time. Um, but there is a possibility during special season uh, that a special truck could make a delivery, and those two could happen to run to each other at the same time. But our drivers are instructed not to idle, and we do not have overnight deliveries, and we do not have idling trucks on site. Our trucks are always en route to go to point A to point B, um, and to do backhauls, there no down, there's no downtime. Uh, and in this day and age, there are not a lot of truck drivers out there anymore. And the amount of hours that they can drive, there is not a lot of downtime for truck drivers. So I just wanna make sure that I stress that those questions um, shouldn't be issues that maybe in years past might have been issues where truck drivers could drive for longer periods of time. Um, but we don't have that issue in this day and age, especially with the So, so are systems. all deliveries during normal business hours? All of our deliveries, should be within normal business hours. Okay. Um, we open up our stores from 9, to 8, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and our typical hours of operation, our employees come in at 6 a.m. Our employees typically leave an hour after we close. Most of the time when they become um, very efficient, they leave shortly after we close. Uh, there was another question in regards to the lighting of the facility. All of our ex exterior lighting does tie in with our security system. So when our employees leave for the night and they arm the system, the actual lighting of the store shuts down 30 minutes following that program signal. So that way the lighting is off at a very precise time. Uh, the only lights that are on are at the egress door locations, the wall packs. So there shouldn't be any issues with excess lighting all night throughout the night. And, um, and, and just to follow up on that, the, the lighting plan conforms with the underlying village code and uh, there, there's some pretty strict guidelines in there in terms of um, zero foot candles at property lines and that kind of stuff. So. Um, DAC location, can you just restate where the DAC location is and um, address the concern about noise? Sure. So this is the actual semi backed into the actual truck dock location here on the drawing. Sorry if you can't see it from your way. Uh, right here. So it, it's parallel to Woodland Terrace is what it amounts to. Correct. It's okay. parallel to Woodland Terrace. Um, and it's, re it's 
below grade. It's also a recessed dock. Okay. Uh, so this will address a couple of different concerns. Somebody had brought up the wind and trash and debris in the dock area. Uh, majority of the time, the wind does come from the west or from the east. Very rarely does it come from the south, but we all appreciate it when it does. But this truck dock is actually recessed. So it's almost four feet down in the lower portion here where the actual dumpster is located. And you also have a six foot screen wall on top of that. So you're almost 10 feet above grade, or not above grade, but um, where the truck, or where the actual dumpster is setting. So you won't have debris blowing around and this, this area is an enclosed area because you also have the truck, the actual bump of the building which stands up at 18 feet. So there will be a screen wall from the wind throughout the whole perimeter of the truck dock except for the front side here. So to go back to the question in regards to noise, uh, with this re being a recessed dock, with a six foot retaining wall, and with the truck being concealed in this area during delivery, we do not run our trucks during delivery and unloading, and the average time for an unload for one of our vehicles is two hours or less. And that's from the moment that they pull into the driveway, back in, unload, load empty equipment, do what they need to do, and leave. Um, and then also, with the amount of landscape design that we've put into the actual site itself, that will be a very large buffer as well as that matures. Okay, and um, oh, the, the dumpsters and the possibility of having uh, attraction to, for critters. Uh, the dumpster question was brought up from other people from our first initial meeting as well. Me personally, I do not find the dumpster to be a concern. We are a food retailer. Uh, we take a lot of pride in making sure we keep a very clean facility. I mean, the first image you have when you go to buy groceries, if you see a lot of dumpster trash and debris in any retail facility, I would want to go to that retailer to buy groceries. And you know, ultimately, we do understand as a retailer that we do have attractive items for rodents. There's no doubt about that. Um, but we do have our services that we hire, and we make sure we spend the time, money, and effort to have a clean facility, whether it's our landscape company going and portaging the site on a weekly basis, or our waste management company coming and picking up the dumpsters. On average, uh, we have our dumpster pick up once a week, but based off of volume, based off of um, all different criteria, our operational team has the opportunity to make that change. We work with the waste management services. We increase our pickups. We take a lot of pride to make sure we have a very clean facility, and we do not want to encourage anybody to come into our area to pick into our trash, whether it's a person or a rodent. Um, we want to avoid those as much as possible. We also set up around the perimeter of our building. We have pest control that visits the site um, on a biweekly basis. And they also have a perimeter set up on the outside to make sure that we have a very clean facility. That's something that we use will kill on a consistent basis within our division. Great, thank you. Then there was a, there was a question about overnight parking. I'm pretty sure that the village doesn't allow overnight parking, right? <coughs> Dave, Dave or Tracy, the village doesn't allow overnight parking. It would only be for a truck that was making a delivery to the site. Would it be allowed? And they've indicated that right. they don't stage trucks okay. in great lead, lead times to the, the delivery. Okay. Um, there's a couple of questions about site design. Um, one suggestion was a fence along the west property line, which would be along Woodland, Woodland Terrace, and the other was a berm. Um, oh, that the west property line would oh. actually be the, against the residential there, and there is a fence. Uh, oh, on the west. The I'm, I'm, I, I had my, I had, yeah, I had my, um, I had my directions mixed up. Uh, there, yeah, the, the project will have a, a fence along the west property line, and it's gonna be landscaped on both sides of, of, the, of the fence. Um, I think they asked about the north. North end. Yeah, they also, yeah, but there was another question. There was also a question about off-site parking and using the cul-de-sac. I mean, it, that's, that's really not going to be a practical issue in my, in my read of the plan in that. Yeah. There's, a, there's a sign at the entrance of the cul-de-sac that says there's no outlet. And if there's a fence there, there's just going to be no way for people to, to get through. Um, it's a four-foot drop. Yeah, there is a site, there is a, a great elevation difference too. Um, a fence or a berm along Woodland Terrace is... I, I think that's something that we are willing to discuss. There are a few things that have been brought to our attention. Um, 
the berm from an engineering standpoint, which Matt can detail more, uh, to incorporate a berm into the design with the bioretention and the grades that we have there is, is not possible. Um, and Matt can go into that detail more. In regards to the fence, uh, I think this addresses, is it Nancy? Um, Nancy brought this up when we talked about landscape design. Your house is across the street. Um, so if your preference is to see green space or to see a fence, I think that is something that I would prefer that she answers that question because I don't mind putting the board on board fence, running it along Woodland Terrace, but if I was a resident and driving around that area and the amount of landscaping that we've built into this area, the amount of enhancements we've done to the building, I would rather see those architectural features and those landscape features. But if they want to have the fence, that's perfectly fine for us to incorporate as well. And I believe the other neighbor that had um, come tonight that we didn't meet in the other night, if that's something that is going to make the residents in the area happy, that is not an issue for all the design the fence to incorporate that on Woodland Terrace. I think that's something we actually designed and put in a lot of thought with our mm -hmm. other design on the other side of the property um, just to kind of mimic the current wood line in that area. Okay. Um, minor uh, code technicality on that. I, I'm not on top of this one, but on a, on a flow through lot like this, what does the code say about having a fence along the street? If it's commercial, you can have it. You can have it, okay. So that's something that you can handle administratively if later on down in the design phase, um, it is still a concern. Okay. Um, there were a couple questions uh, questions about uh, runoff and stormwater. Um, also, whether the, the um, retention area was going to be wet or dry and how it was going to drain and where all the water is going to go. So that's probably a question for the civil engineering. Tracy, could you go to, I think it's slide 11. Perfect, thank you. Um, I thought I touched on some of this earlier, but I'll be happy to go over it again. Um, just to explain the existing drainage condition, which one of the residents brought up um, earlier, there is a small depression within the site right about here where everything pretty much funnels to that location now. Um, and it does pond somewhat from what I understand, and then it probably, I think it overtops and goes into Linda Lane from my understanding. In the larger range. Sounds like that's well. the area they were talking yep. about, the ice skating. Yep. Yep. So um, with the proposed plan, it definitely improves upon that. In fact, it, it basically limits just a small amount of runoff just on the west side of the store here that goes there now. So the entire site um, doesn't go that direction. It's actually split between the north and the south. Um, the majority of the site actually goes to the south, which includes the building here. Set this down. Um, the building here and the south parking lot. Um, and working with the village engineer, he checked and it confirmed that the most capacity was actually in the Grand Avenue um, storm sewer system where there's actually a pipe and a ditch. So there's okay. both. Um, and with that, again, just to explain so everybody understands what the, the, the purpose is of the dry bays in here, which I'll get to a little bit more in a second, and the underground detention chamber, it actually holds and stores the water and releases it at a slower rate. So it actually helps with the actual drainage aspects of the site. Um, so, so this it, underground so it chamber detains and doesn't retain. What's that? It detains now. Detains, retains. yep. It releases at a slow rate based on a small hole um, in the chamber itself. And, and there's an outlet structure on this dry pond here. Um, and just to elaborate a little bit more about this area here, um, I believe I mentioned it's a dry basin, which means it'll either be a grass bottom or it'll be a bioretention basin which means it'll have an engineered soil to it and plantings in it, um, which helps kind of treat some of the stormwater runoff, remove some of the sediment particles from it um, before it gets discharged ultimately into, it's kind of hard to see on this drawing, um, but there's an existing catch basin right here that runs across the road and then goes down Woodland Terrace. And then that system runs down Douglas Terrace to the north. Um, so that's the direction the drainage is released, and it's released at such a small rate based upon the available storage that this pond provides. Um, I think just to touch on berming along the north side as well, um, we're trying to free up as much room as possible for this pond to help with the drainage aspect of the site. 
that it doesn't really allow for a lot of room to have a berm in this area, um, just based on the amount of, of flat space, if you will, between the pond and the right-of-way line of the property. And then down here, you just have a small section between the curb and the right-of-way line that it's really not, it doesn't really allow for a large berm to go up and then come back down. So. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, I, I did notice that we, I think we missed one traffic thing. Um, the exit um, northbound onto uh, Woodland Terrace. I, my understanding is the trucks will be instructed to only go to the east, um, but car traffic can go east or west, correct? Okay. Um, there were some questions about jurisdiction, about snow plowing and, and things like that. Um, State of Illinois is responsible for Grand Avenue. That's why the roads, Grand Avenue is never as good as the rest of our roads. Um, I mean, that's, it's, that's a fact, but... Um, What's the, how, how do, logistically, how does okay. Woodland Terrace work out? Hutchins Road will be still maintained by Lake County DOT. Hutchins Road, we have an intergovernmental agreement with um, a, a very good working relationship with Warren Township. Warren Township currently plows Woodland Terrace. It doesn't make sense for the village to plow the first 400 feet and then the township to plow the rest of it. They will maintain the plowing routes on Woodland Terrace just as they always have. Okay. And then um, also related to Grand Avenue, the, the state of Illinois dictates how many curb cuts can be on, on, on Grand Avenue because it's a, whatever, whatever uh, it's called. Years ago, they bought access rights from all the properties along um, uh, Grand Avenue. That, that's part of the strate Strategic Regional Arterial Program. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they did that, they limit those access points to where they were. Uh, it becomes very, very difficult, if not impossible, to create new ones, especially when there are existing ones that are available to the site, as is this case. Okay. Um, weight restriction on, on Woodland Terrace? Woodland Terrace right now is signed six tons. Um, that was an effort by the uh, township, once again, to limit truck traffic. Uh, what we will do is we'll work with Warren Township to move that sign down the road a little bit. Uh, once the property is annexed, Woodland Terrace becomes the right-of-way of the village of Gurney. We have maintenance responsibility for that in the future, and we would be able to set the weight limits. Um, the adequacy of the road is, is there. Um, I don't see any issue with the adequacy of the, the pavement structure. Okay. Um. There was a question about annexation. Um, that's, that's really a matter between the property owner and who they elect to want to do business with, so to speak, whether they wanted to stay in the county or in this case they approached the village. So that's, that's strictly a negotiation between landowners and, and the uh, respective uh, uh, governmental agency. Um, yeah, and I can just add to that. Yeah, go ahead. that that's the, uh, the property owner or contract purchaser uh, together. Uh, they make their own decision on that. They file a petition, and that motivates this process, including tonight. Once the village receives a petition, it must uh, go through a, a hearing process and conduct due process with that. So the village has no alternative but to uh, uh, proceed with that petition as it would with any petition uh, filed at Village Hall. Okay. Um, then there were some related questions about tax benefits and concessions. Um, that is outside of our, this group's purview. I mean, we have, we have nothing to do with taxing or concessions or incentive packages. We, we strictly deal with, with land, land use. Um, and anything that happens with concessions is negotiated between the village board and, and particular business owners. Want to add anything on that? Right, and I'm not aware of any, there's no incentives uh, involved in this from the village's standpoint. The village is not uh, making any uh, financial concessions in the form of any proposed uh, revenue rebates or anything like that. So the village is not uh, providing any incentives to attract this particular petitioner to this site. 
um, there was a question about um, alternative sites or alternative locations. Um, we can only deal with what's presented to us. So it's not it's not our role to suggest. Uh, did you consider this site instead of that site? Um, we we have to deal with the particulars of the matter that that's put before us. In, in a general sense, though, um, the village. Uh, we do have an economic uh, a development person. Actually, Gurney is faring very well in occupancy rates, um, but uh, uh, it's always the case if someone uh, expresses interest in property to either annex or within the village, uh, our economic development director does make available all information about possible sites. Obviously, uh, there are different uh, legal restrictions, different ownership restrictions, and uh, so the village can't, does not get involved in any of those negotiations whatsoever. They may make available uh, known statuses of properties. That's about, uh, that's generally what we can do um, in terms of um, informing potential businesses of opportunities or restrictions within the village. Okay. Um, there's a question about the curb cuts and agreements for the sh shared driveway um, like 20 some 25 years ago Dave you want any I know you talked about that a little bit but you want to yeah. add anything we researched the development project we did uh, record searches we did not find anything that provided for a legal right for the Aldi site to utilize that north entrance of the bank site um, believe me we tried that was our preferred uh, solution as well to have a common access point there. Um, however, there was no means of getting um, uh, joint access on that north, north end of the site. Okay. Well, there was a question as to whether or not there are gonna be any signs at uh, Hutchins or, or Woodland. There are, there are no signs to be proposed there. Um, there was a very specific question about C2 truck requirements. Um, and once again, as uh, the gentleman from KLOA indicated, um, trucks are allowed to travel local roads in order to obtain access to commercial properties. So that would be the case on this. The village has, once we annex the property, we would have full jurisdiction over that section of Woodland Terrace and would be able to allow trucks for the purpose of making deliveries to that site. And there was a question of what the slanted lines were on the north side of the prop on that one, that one exhibit. Um, th those those hash marks were were showing where the building lines uh, could be. They, they were the setbacks in yeah, terms the of paving setbacks. Yeah. yeah. Along direction. So so nothing's going there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, setbacks. it's showing where nothing can go there. Um, there was a question about uh, transparency of the process and appeals. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a recommending body to the village board. Uh, the village board has um, uh, the final say in the matter, and um, the transparency is, I mean, I mean we have this, this open meeting that um, you, you've all participated in very well. Um, there was the bus stop issue. Um, my understanding is the bus stops, they're under the purview of the respective school districts. Um, I kind of thought the idea of a, about a, a permanent pad is, is it's kind of interesting, um, but I, it's outside my, my purview. I don't, I, I don't know um, how practical that is because my understanding is bus stops change as the student population changes and, and the districts evaluate those things all the time. Um, but that's certainly worth taking a run at the, the respective school boards on. Um, there was a question about bike racks and cart returns. Um, I'm not sure that we really have any. I, I, you want to address the cart return? Yeah. Why don't you quarterback? Uh, this diagram here is fine to show, but. The, the cart area is along this side of the building here and here. And this actually is a foundation of a cart enclosed area with masonry 
Um, so compared to Mariano's outside exterior cart corrals, our cart corrals trump them quite a bit. Um, and actually that increases tax dollars as well as building foundation. So our cart corral is actually part of the building um, and it actually is a rental system. So you put your, quor your quarter into the cart, take your cart, go shopping, return your cart, get your quarter back. Um, so we don't have debris carts going around the neighborhood. Um, if somebody does abandon their cart, usually somebody grabs that right away and gets a quarter. You'd be amazed what people do for that quarter and the exchanges they have. So I think the cart corral, um, you know, we don't have the exterior cart corrals out in the parking lot and that's not gonna be something for the neighborhood to see. Uh, so I wanna make sure we address that. Rooftop screens are brought up as well. Um, we do have roof, rooftop screens that were incorporated into the elevations to screen the actual mechanical devices on the rooftop. Um, and then I believe there was one other question besides the cart, what was it? Bike racks. Bike racks. Bike racks. Um, if we were to incorporate bike racks and work with the, the village in regards to those locations, um, we have no issues with incorporating the bike rack and what type of bike rack that would be to accommodate uh, children or the public. A lot of people have really enjoyed us incorporating the bike racks on the backsides of the cart crown closures, um, just going off past experience. But that's something that we usually like to incorporate, um, getting feedback in these meetings right here. And that's something we can work with Tracy um, or Dave or anybody within the administration if you guys want to make that a note as part of our approval process. Okay. And then there was a question about compact car spaces to try to get more parking. And I haven't heard any, any desire to get anything like that. Um, we, we really don't um, incorporate compact car design within our, our parking lots. Okay. Uh, we just stick to the minimum parking requirements we have to make it a valid site. And, and utilize the um, village code, whether it's a nine by 18 or a 10 by 20 requirement. And I believe with the village, it was nine by 18. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have any compact cars. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, then there was a question about, um, and this is, it's part of the curb cut issue, but um, why the, the, uh, the exit is aligned with uh, Douglas Terrace and that's, that's just best planning practices these days. And I would like to mention for the people that have brought up, it does look odd on this plan, like as if it's only a left out. And the reason for that, just so I can clarify, is this shows the existing radius of the bank property. This curb, or not curb, but this actual radius here with the curb where they're exiting out, this gets eliminated. So this is actually all paved area, and this would be the island separating the two entrances. So I think that that line on the, on the drawings, we can maybe clarify um, and get rid of that existing line to, to make it so it doesn't confuse people to think it's just a left out. Okay, good, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, back to members of the Planning and Zoning Board. Um, um, first, uh, first matter uh, to conclude on is the, the zoning map amendment to um, change the zoning from uh, unincorporated uh, Lake County to Village. Any discussion? Hey, do question? We need, do we need to make separate motions? Yeah, yes. we need, yeah, we need to make, we're gonna make separate motions on all five of these, okay. Well, yeah. one of the reasons why I asked, you know, how long, how many years it's been zoned within the county is uh, GC General Commercial. It seems to me that although it's open space, uh, Currently, I mean, at any time, 25 plus years, somebody could have come along and put a commercial building, commercial anything, gas station, uh, in there. So, to me, it seems appropriate. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Dave? Yes, thank you. I, to address the, the appropriateness of commercial zoning, I, like I said, <clears throat> or it's been well um, proven tonight that it's an existing commercial site under the county and has been for a long time. And if you take a look at the corridor, um, there's numerous instances where we have commercial zoning that abuts Grand Avenue that also abuts residential, residential district. And it's been able to succeed. It's been able to coexist. So I'm not saying that it can't. But this particular site seems unique compared to all the others that seem to run up and down Grand Avenue where, where we have a similar situation with this one with the, th with the through lot, um, yeah, I, I run into a little bit more concern about that fact because um, most of these other sites we're talking about, whether it's the car dealerships or whether it's 
um, you know, Walgreens or, you know, these others, um, we don't have a through lot situation. So the access is either off of Grand Avenue or off of a major or secondary arterial that, that comes straight in. Um, so it's either Almond Road or Stonebrook Drive or Hut, uh, Hutchins or whatever. And, and so, you know, I, I think there's some concern on my part just because of the fact that the primary access point to this has been uh, established as a residential street. And um, I, think, I think in the testimony earlier by the petitioner, um, the ratio as they saw it, or maybe it was the traffic uh, consultant, uh, basically showed the trips basically fairly well split down the middle between what they expected to come in off of Grand Avenue and what they expected to come in off of Woodland. So it wasn't a situation where we could say, okay, well, based on our analysis, we're looking at, you know, 90% of the trips or 80% of the trips come in off of Grand. It was fairly well split. So um, you know, other than the car dealerships, I know Buchanan runs behind the car dealerships, but yet even behind Buchanan, there's still additional uh, property that's owned by the dealerships for compensatory car storage or whatever. So th this is a very unique situation. And I, my comfort level, I guess, with so much of the access being on what is clearly a residential street versus, you know, even if the situation was different and we had the right in right out off of Grand and the second access came in off of Hutchins into the site, it would be different to me than coming in off of uh, a purely residential street um, okay. like I, Woodland. I, so, so I, I, again, just to, to summarize what I'm saying is that I, I'm not questioning the appropriateness of the parcel being zoned commercial, okay, but under the particular circumstances it's unique compared to a lot of the other situations where we have this residential commercial direct contact point okay and I, I i guess where i i come down on this one from just a, a pure technicality type issue is that it's quote unquote called a rezoning but but it really isn't it's 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 a change in jurisdiction in terms of right now the way the property is zoned all the or the property owner has a right to to build something of the of the nature of an Aldi, um, so it's it's really a technicality that instead of it being in the county, it would be in the village, and and, and I think and I and I understand that completely, yeah, yeah. and that's why I wanted to make sure that I stated that I agree mm -hmm. that the appropriateness of commercial zoning mm -hmm. is still there. Okay. Okay. And, and that's, that's what we but have But I to also want to make sure that for the record, I, I, I wanted to explain okay. where my concern lie. Okay. Point, point well made. John? Okay. Yes, sir. I'm something to add as well. So I, I do concur. I, I do, I, I feel like you do, that, uh, you know, it's, it's already general commercial. Uh, there's been, I have empathy for the folks that uh, that talk tonight, um, you talked about it, brought it into a, to a human level. Um, I understand completely uh, where I live. I live over by where they built Golden Corral, and where Golden Corral is. Uh, when I first moved in to Gurney, it was wooded area. Okay, so we had the same concerns, uh, and so I do have those concerns. One of the things that we just brought up was that. Uh, the primary, the, the primary entrance to the Golden Corral site is off of Dilly's. And where I live in a cul-de-sac um, is the secondary is off of Pinewood. Um, and I do, for the record, have a concern where the primary does seem for the Aldi location is going to be off of Woodland, um, which is a residential street compared to Grand Avenue, um, I just, me personally, and I, I know it's controlled by the state of Illinois and not the village of Gurnee, but I know if I'm gonna go and get my oil, oil changed or gonna go to Saludos and I'm going 50 miles an hour down Grand Avenue, I really don't like stopping on Grand Avenue. I feel like I'm gonna get hit. And so that is a concern and I think that's gonna, you know, as you do have repeat business, you are going to have uh, consumers that are going to learn to say, oh, you know, maybe I don't want to make that turn. So, I, you know, it's, it's out of my purview, um, but I, I do wish, I don't know if there's anything that we can do to get with the county to, 
get in some sort of deceleration lane, but that is a concern. And I also just wanted to get my concerns on the record. I, I, I do see that, you know, it's simply just moving this for us tonight, moving it from general commercial Lake County to uh, C2 community commercial for Village of Gurney. I think that's appropriate, but I do have concerns. Uh, so. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I have a, uh, just a question. It, they could, um, if they made a couple modifications to this. We wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't even be here, right? Right. It would just be a done deal. Right. So that, that's just my thought. I mean, there's no way to stop something from going in there because it's a commercial piece of property. So uh, somebody can build something there, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's a grocery store or uh, something else commercial. Right. So. That's just my thought. I mean, I, I understand everybody's concern here about the traffic too, but my thought is that uh, at some point somebody could come along and build something regardless. Correct. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Otherwise, a motion would be in order. This is only a motion for... Just a motion for the um, change from being in the county to being in the village. Yeah, the zoning. The zoning. That includes the zoning change? The yes, it time? does. Yeah, yeah. It does. It, it, it yeah. would, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve, uh, we forward a favorable recommendation to change the, the zoning for this property from uh, Lake County C2 to Gurney Commercial District as uh, outlined in the uh, notes. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second it. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Roll call. And just for clarification, I think he said GC. That that's what it currently is, and it's going to go to C two. Sorry, right. my yeah. mistake. Yeah. As I, 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 I know everybody understood that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To, to be rezoned from from G county GC, right. Yeah, right? From county GC to village C two. Right. Okay. Could we have a roll call? Bow. Aye. Garrity. Aye. McFarland. Aye. Nordentoff. Aye. Path. Aye. And Zula. Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> All right, the next one um, is uh, regarding the encroachment of the uh, Grand Avenue uh, parking lot setback. That's that area, oh, it's, it's up there right now where there's like a sliver that's um, in red. In red, thank you, I couldn't tell what color it was. Any questions or comments? I have no problem with that. Okay. So I'll make a motion. Okay. So can someone make a motion, please? It's, is it 2A? It's um, B1. B2. It's 4B1. But, uh, but, 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 but the motion would be to recommend um, approval of a, a variance for an encroachment into the parking lot along Grand Avenue as presented. That, that would be the, the motion. So it's three A if you're looking at the other sheet. Yeah. I, I usually don't make motions, but I guess I just did, so I'll, I'll make so the motion. So I'll second. <laughs> okay. So okay. So moved by Mr. Bow, second by Mr. Garrity. Uh, roll call, please. Bow. Aye. Garrity. Aye. McFarland. Aye. Nordentoff. Aye. Path. Aye. Anzula. Aye. Motion carries. Um, the next one is. Um, the special use permit to allow the uh, transparency reduction on both the north and south elevations to less than the, to uh, less than the required 50%. Any questions or comments about that? No, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion to reduce the transparency on the north and south elevation to less than the required 50% for the Aldi project. As presented. As presented. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it. Right. Second by Mr. Paff. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Bow. Aye. Garrity. Aye. McFarland. Aye. Nordentoff. Aye. Path. Aye. And Zula. Aye. Motion carries. Um, the final one uh, for the recommendation of the village board is the reduction of the green area to below 10%. I missed the. Sir, curb cut separation. Is that part of that? No, it's no, going to be a fifth motion. Yeah. Right. Curb cut separation. We've gone through three oh. so far. Two more. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. Oops. I, I skipped it. Thank you. Uh, so let's talk about the uh, green space reduction. Any, any comments or concerns about that? I think they did a great job on the landscaping around the property, so I don't have a problem with it. Well, that. and it's, it's not a huge... It's de minimis. Okay. The amount they're missing it by isn't... Okay. Isn't so, do we have a motion? 9.3 versus 10. That's yeah, three. Yeah. So I think it's adequate. Dave? Uh, I move we forward a favorable recommendation for a special use permit to allow reduction of the percentage of green area within the parking lot to below 10% as submitted. I'll second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Brian seconded it. Um, no. Roll call, please. Bow. Aye. Garrity. Aye. McFarland. Aye. Nordentoff. Aye. Path. Aye. And Pasek. I'm um, Sula. I'm sorry. Okay. Aye. Um, motion carries. I'm sorry I skipped the one. Uh, uh, any discussion on the reduction of the separation, uh, a reduction of this in the separation of the curb cut? This is for the, on, hmm? We're right there. On Woodland Terrace. Yeah, on Woodland Terrace. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. where the trucks are going to come in and out. I'm, I'm glad that you, the gentleman from Aldi, discussed uh, that it's just going to be an open space there and not a, uh, I was wondering how that was going to play out. So I, I, that was my only question. Uh, it's been answered, so I have no further. Uh, I, I think, too, you know, it, it is a concern. I think the resident did bring up the, the concern that uh, the truck will not be going on to his property. Um, you know, th that is a concern. We're going to rely on Aldi and its vendor partners, right, right. to make sure it's been communicated to uh, their vendor partners and, and to Aldi if they have any vendor partners to, okay. to make sure that they're good neighbors and they're not going up on neighbors' lawns. That is a concern. But other than that, it's appropriate. Any other questions or comments? Dave? No. I think we need a second. No, I, nobody made a motion. Okay. A motion. okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was making a motion. No. I'm moving I, I forward a favorable recommendation to allow <laughs> variance for the reduction of separation of curb cut from an existing curb cut. I'll second. Made by Mr. Nordentoff, second by Mr. Garrity. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Bow. Aye. Garrity? Aye. McFarland? Aye. Nordentoff? Aye. Path? Aye. And Sula? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, that concludes the, the public hearing portion of the meeting. Um, as I mentioned before, on these items that we just voted on, um, they're strictly recommendations to the Village Board, and the Village Board has final say on those matters. Uh, next item on the agenda is a minor sign exception. Okay. Doyle Signs, on behalf of Aldi, is seeking a minor sign exception to allow a 33.3% increase in the overall height of the monument sign from 12 feet to 16 feet. They are also requesting a minor sign exception to allow a 23.9% increase in the overall size of the monument sign from 90 square feet to 111.5 square feet. The Aldi store will sit approximately nine feet above the Grand Avenue roadway elevation, and the location of the ground sign is approximately four feet above the Grand Avenue roadway elevation. The Planning and Zoning Board has the final decision-making authority on minor sign exception petitions. The petitioner is in attendance to present their plans and answer any questions the board may have. Okay, is there a representative from Doyle here? Oh, you're going to do it? Okay. Um, just need to grab one of those portable mics. So once again, Tom Howe, Director of Real Estate from Aldi, Inc., 9342 South 13th Street, Oak Creek, Wisconsin. I believe the next uh, image actually shows the monument sign. Here we go. Um, just to go through, uh, we did incorporate a nice masonry designed um, monument sign for this pylon and working with city staff um, and Tracy specifically <coughs> in regards to the different requirements to get through this minor sign exception. Uh, we did incorporate masonry with the building uh, material itself uh, and then also doing a soldier course ban in the, in the lower portion there below the sign can itself and then also capping it on the sides of the monument uh, with a nice capstone and then also meeting the requirements with the different sign features of the city. Uh, so I can answer questions that you may have in regards to the actual design and the height. 
Um, a lot of the reasons for us applying for the height of that sign was from the visibility uh, on Grand Avenue, um, the actual residential from westbound traffic and the tree line uh, from our site uh, it is not visible, and then also from the east or the traffic going westbound on Gra Grand Avenue, um, with the fifth and third sign being at, I believe it's 18 feet, um, and blocking the view. It gives us the visibility of having a sign from Grand Avenue, and that's the reason for us applying for this tonight. Uh, Tracy, can you flip back to the site plan so um, he can just show us exactly where on the, where, where is it going to go again? The yellow. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. So is the sign going to be illuminated during business hours only? Is it going to be on at 2, two o'clock in the morning? I mean, what? Yep. I can answer that question and it ties in with the question I answered earlier. All of our exterior lighting and interior lighting is all LED lighting. And then also all of our lighting for the entire property um, shuts down once the employees leave for the night and arm the store. Um, it also has an override in the system itself where it does shut off the building signs and other exterior um, lot lights at a certain point at night. I can't remember the exact turn off if it's 11 p.m. when that does shut down those different portions, um, but we're in full control of that with a third party energy management um, Siemens as the company that does that. So the actual building signs tie in with the rest of all the exterior lighting and shuts off 30 minutes upon arming the store. So on average, I'd say almost every night so before 10 p.m., all the all the lights in the property would be off. Okay, but but our, our, our the matter before us is 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 height and, and square footage. Um, from my perspective, it's kind of in character with a lot of the businesses that are in the immediate area. And I personally don't have a problem with it. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. We just did the uh, Honda sign not too long ago. Do you have any clue how tall that is, just as a comparison? It's not one of the examples, um, is it? It's not one of the examples, but we did list quite a few um, other examples of the signs in the area with um, the height in. That's got to be 18 that, feet. It was a 50% increase to the allowed, so it's 18 feet. But, okay, but, so but, this is shorter. But Anthony is 20 feet. The Dodge dealership is 20 feet. Okay. The credit union is 20 feet. Or I'm sorry, yeah, 20 feet. Huh. Okay. 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 Well, how tall is this Thank sign? You. Well, well, uh, right. you were speed. asking about the new yeah. Rohrman sign. Is that what you were asking no, he's about? No, about the sign. Honda. The uh, Honda. Oh, the Bueller. Honda. I'm sorry. Yeah, because we just did one know. of their signs, the one on the used car dealership side. Those are probably 20 feet tall. Okay. I, I thought so. I thought it was similar. I just wanted to. Yeah. That, that was covered in an annexation agreement. They were allowed to go 20 feet in height. That annexation agreement has expired for Honda, so if they were to want to completely redo that sign, they'd have to comply with our new code. Okay. All right. So, sir, okay. so sure. we spent probably over a year trying to change the character of the signs in the village, and that's how we got to 12 feet. All of these monster signs that you guys are outlining were in place before that and uh, you know i personally invested a lot of time in it so we're never going to if we just make exceptions every time because the big one next door is 20 feet tall then these guys can have one 16 feet tall you're never going to reduce the the character of the signage on the major streets that we have so having said that i'll go down in flames if i have to but okay. uh, i put a lot of effort into that and we all did i want you to think okay. about it okay any other questions, comments? Once again, as, as Clara mentioned, this it's it's considered minor in nature, um, and our motion would be to either grant or deny approval. So, I would make a motion to grant approval on the minor sign exception. Uh, there's two of them. It's, oh, it's height. both in height, height okay. and in area. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. As presented. We have, a, we have a motion by Mr. Paff. Do we have a second? If we don't get a second. We're never getting out of here, folks. Second. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Paff. Second by Mr. Garrity. Could roll call, please. Bow. No. Garrity. No. McFarland. Definitely no. Nordentoff. Nay. Path. 
Aye. And Zula. Aye. Motion does not carry. So what that means is you, you didn't get approval from us, but I believe the appeal process is to go directly to the village board. Okay. All right. Can I see it properly? Okay. Next meeting on the calendar is December 5th. Do we have anything? We will likely have a public hearing. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, we allow for public comment for um, anything that we else that anybody would like to say. That's so I'm going to open. Huh? That's not on the agenda. No, just okay. that isn't on the agenda. That isn't on the agenda, right? Yes. So if you have a comment about something that wasn't on the agenda, I'm opening the floor to the public. Okay. I guess I don't know if this is appropriate. You'll tell me. Um, so after this is apparently approved, then what's our next step if we want to contest? Um, it, it, okay. In terms of process, uh, on the other items that we talked about before, the, the sign things, uh, all those were uh, recommendations to the village board, and the village board will be hearing at one of their regularly scheduled uh, board meetings, there'll actually be two meetings that because there'll be an annexation hearing, right? There could be. You'll have to monitor the agenda. Okay. They, they, this is the public hearing portion. These are now advanced to the village board. Uh, uh, you will have to um, check the agendas to see exactly what meeting that will fall on. At that time, there will not be another public hearing, but this will be an agenda item for the board to consider. So it's typically, do we know, do we have an estimate as to when this might go to the village board? Early December, December at the earliest first meeting, which is December Maybe the third. third right? So it, it might be, it could very well be December 3rd, or but uh, we would encourage you to, um, to look for the agenda. And would there be, so we wouldn't have the opportunity to speak? Uh, typically the, the, the mayor does allow public comment on that but there will not be a presentation like there was tonight. Everything, all the comments that were made will be included in the minutes and the board will have read those uh, before, uh, they'll be in their meeting packet uh, before the meeting and they will have had the opportunity to consider that information before voting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. You need to use the microphone, please, okay. I don't know if you answered this question. One of the um, residents asked, who is going to maintain uh, the landscaping? Um, that the, the, are the, going the to owner have? of the property has that continuing responsibility uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, they would be subject, if it's an accident to the village, they would be subject to the village enforcing uh, those requirements. Okay. So that if there is dead shrubs, they could be cited uh, under a village code and as part of uh, any, any agreement that's entered into. Okay. Thank you. And that runs with the land with the property owner, irrespective of who that owner is. Whoever owns it has to maintain it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Maria Westfall, 18391 North Linda Lane. So my question to the gentleman, in changing this perspective area from the zoning of GC to a commercial two, is that right? Will there be changes from what we established here tonight of where the directions of those vehicles would be delivering trucks and continue to park into those lanes and drive into those lanes. No, the, the, those uh, movements were uh, submitted in support of the, the change that has been recommended tonight. So, so that's part of the record. Okay, so that, that it's not gonna affect us in the future with this change of zoning that the stipulations here establish is gonna change with the zoning according to C2 code. C uh, uh, correct, I mean, the board still has to make the final decision on that. Mm -hmm. Assuming that that's the case, they would uh, make their decision based on uh, the information provided tonight. For the, um, Mr., I'm sorry, the first gentleman over here, 
In your reference to Golden Corral, sir, there's a camera stop light right on Dilly on Grandwood Drive, slowing traffic down. And also there's a turn on Dilly onto Golden Corral. There's also an entrance uh, okay, of where okay, I'm, I'm, Culver's I'm, is. This, this, so I'm just saying, I, I, I the know, entrance but, but this of isn't... Your, for, for your I, semi-trucks, we, saying we, that it's a, we, we've it, already, it's a non-issue regarding residential area. We, we, we've already, con, we've already considered the issue. We've made our recommendation. We closed the floor to the public on that. Now's not the time to debate it. If you want to talk to Mr. Garrity privately, you're welcome to do that, but it's, it's not appropriate for public comment. Well, I'm, I'm just saying okay. to compare apples to apples and oranges I, to oranges, th this is right in direct line of our residential areas. That's all I'm saying is that... Okay. I don't want anything to be dissuaded when the zoning is changed from the GC to C2 for the trucks to come inbound. It, in it would residence. be a reasonable expectation that whatever happens after the village, assuming the village does do the annexation, whatever is developed will be in substantial conformity with what was presented tonight. Thank okay. you for doing Okay. Mr. Day at 36119 North Douglas Terrace. Um, as you noticed, I wasn't there at the estate pick. All right, I was down in Tennessee, the, the personal business. Um, at the time, three questions. One, these slides that we have seen today, are they available to me at all? All right, at any point, somehow or another? Through the there village. There's some good stuff I want to see. They, they would be available at the village. Uh, if you want to talk to uh, village staff, they can make that available to yeah, you. Yeah, the plans are available uh, at. I mean, because I mean, they had some nice slides with the showing that they threw. It was really, really nice to see, so I could get a little bit better idea. Number two, as uh, another thing, like she said, with the with the landscaping, uh, I would like to ask them how they were going to deal with their snow removal. Okay, um, where are they going to be putting their snow? Right now, the bank pushes it over into the street. The street pushes it right onto my property. Now I have a really big lot of concrete okay. that is going to be pushed either on the Grand or on the Woodland Terrace, okay. which the um, uh, the our uh, huh? yeah the uh, okay. I'm sorry what is it? All right, the okay. township is already it will will be taking care of okay. that snow removal when they push it onto Woodland Terrace. All right, where is all this snow going to go when there is a vast amount of snow? We have one inch coming now. Can you imagine what happens at six inches? Okay. The, right. the village? I know, how, I know how the snow removal people okay. that, you, that people are higher. I have friends who are, are, are and they push sir, it right sir, into sir, the I'm sir, sir, I'm trying to answer your question. Okay. I've already closed the floor to the public on the matter. The village has policies, procedures, and ordinances related to what you can do with snow removal. Those ordinances will be enforced, okay? Those new ordinances will be enforced by now Gurney, right? And well, not Lake County. well, I just want to make the clarification. This is a recommendation tonight. This is not the end of the process. It's a de deliberative process. These are recommendations. The board still has to make its choice. But um, with regards to any other questions, this is really outside the scope, but you are encouraged those we understand you have those questions just direct them to staff afterwards and then they can attempt to answer your questions if there were any that that uh, uh, you needed to and have what answered. was that last thing that you had mentioned something about that we can petition or something like that no I I said that the next step is this recommendation is going to be considered uh, by way of an ordinance at a future board meeting most likely the first Monday of December. At that time, this, ha this matter will be brought, could be brought to a vote by the village board. If that is, if that is the course of action, then I, you need to have that before it's annexed. You were talking about annexation, and I just wanted to make clear that you understood this has not yet been an annexed to the okay. village. And the documents you're looking for are at Village Hall and sometimes at the library. Yeah, at the library. And you can also access a lot of things on the Village website. Thank you, Kennedy. Okay. All right. I'm closing the floor to the public. Um, thank you, everyone. We need a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries.
Thanks, everyone. See you and have a great trip.